It's Saturday Night Live. It's Mark Pyers. I was and it's real down talk. The road today, looking for another way to ease my, my mind, mind and, my living. and help my living. It's real talk. It's the Daily Variety Show. Mark Pyers, Real Talk. I'm here to connect with you, to amplify your current state, and I'm here with you on day 573 in a row of the Mark Pyers Real Talk Show, and it's Saturday Night Live Hammerlin'. We're dropping the hammer and rubbing the lid off the fake news. Do yeah, you guys know what's going on tonight, right? Mary M. Hanane is calling back for the fourth, the fourth descent down the rabbit hole. That's right, people. So strap in. It's going to be a heck of a ride. I can't wait. She should be calling in any moment. My man Sig has said he's over here. He, I think he's heading over to YouTube in a second. He said, I'll be over in a bit. <laughs> so we're going to get uh, Mary Ann on right at the beginning of the show because it's been an action-packed day. But we're going to see if we can get the show going early on f- for her, her section. And then maybe I'll continue on for a little longer. Though I do have some news. I told you guys about this yesterday. There was a reason why I couldn't talk about this, but I was uh, going to do something today. Uh, I was out of the area. It was, I think, an 11 and a half hour drive, you know, there and back. And uh, I'll, I'll share a little bit more when Mary Ann gets on with us. So let me see. Let me just quickly head over and make sure she's not on Zoom waiting for me to. Let me just do this so she sees me. All right, perfect. So I'm ready. When she comes in, she'll know. Hopefully she'll send me, send me a text. You guys ready for this? Fourth descent down the rabbit hole, people. And there's so much to talk about. So much is going on in the world right now. Did you see the other day the Yankee game? Pretty cool. Yankees and Nationals were playing. Uh, What was Fauci doing with his mask, like, under his neck? I saw someone also the other day got a ticket. A citation for not wearing their mask properly. That's a new thing. Uh, Our liberty slashed and burned. Look, I get it. I think that people should have, you know, be courteous of everybody else around them. And if it's going to help, it's going to help. But maybe it would be nice to see some scientific proof, people, on what works, what doesn't. So people aren't walking around there with freaking, like, plastic bags over their faces. (laughs) Yeah, I don't want to see that. Okay, what about the guy who's walking around with, like, a paper bag? He's like, I couldn't find a mask, so I just put a paper bag over my face. But it works, because you're just walking around with tinsel. Like, what's going on, people? What are you making your masks out of these days? <laughs> and a- again, the thing that I have a problem with is I'm reading some crazy stuff. One of the things I read, I'm going to ask Mary Ann about this, is one of those cloth masks that people are wearing, like my kids wear, and maybe your kids wear. After about a half hour breathing into them, over and over, the repetitive action of breathing into these masks creates, like, a uh, humidity, and then it, it's, and you're breathing this bacteria back into your body. And also, it's mold starts to form inside these masks, so you got to wash them constantly. Anyway, let's see if Mariam is with us yet. Let me click over here. Oh, we, we need Zabrowski. This is good stuff right here, guys. Woo-hoo! The woo-hoo. There's nothing better than a woo-hoo. So I'm going to share something with you guys. Very exciting stuff. Um, I've been married for 13 years, going on 13 years, okay? Actually, that's crazy. Okay, look, everything in my life revolves on 13. It's my favorite number. I was born April 13th. 13 is the greatest number in the world. Sig, how are you, my friend? I'm glad to see you on YouTube. Guys, if you can, head over to YouTube. Subscribe and ding the bell. That's where the show goes. That's where Sig is. You want to hang out with Sig Sour? He's cool. He's over there hanging out. You should head over to YouTube and, and kick it with the Sig, okay? And also, we should see more people over there soon. 13 strawberry donuts. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I have a sad story, but it's also a great story. So today, I took a journey. I took a journey for 11, 11 and a half hours, all right? My wife drove most of it because she likes to drive her car. She doesn't like me driving her car, which I get. Look, I don't like people driving my car. I like to drive my car too. But So I drove some, but she liked to drive most of it. She did. She did an amazing job. Got us there. Got us back safely. And the big trip on the way is I was going to stop at Obco Donuts to get my favorite donut of all time. I have been thinking about this donut for 29 years. 
I'm not even joking. I moved from New Jersey. This donut is still on my mind. I get every every like couple weeks. I'm like, man, I wish I can get that strawberry ice donut from Obco. Like it's that's what it's called. Okay, I'm just telling you. I'm giving away the secret. The greatest donut in the history of time. It's called the strawberry iced donut, and it's made at Obco Donuts in Tom's River, New Jersey. And you should go and get an extra one for me, or at least eat an extra one for me. Think about me while you're eating it. It's the greatest donut in history. I'll tell you why, okay? Here's what you could imagine on this donut. And I'm going to start making it myself because I, I made donuts last week. You may have seen that. I'm making this donut because I didn't get a chance to go. That's the bottom line in this whole story. It's very sad. This donut, though, is basically like a cinnamon donut. All right, You know, like those awesome cinnamon donuts you get where they're right out of the oven and they're like just covered with cinnamon and they're like crispy inside? You got that, okay? But on top of that cinnamon crispiness... I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm having a moment. I'm feeling the clamped. Talk amongst yourselves. Strawberry icing is neither strawberry or ice cream. Dis discuss. Okay, I'm fine. Hold on, I was just having a little gunkus in the gazunka to point. I'm back. So this donut, on top of this strawberry, or the, on top of this cinnamon donut, is not just, you know how you got like strawberry frosted? People go get strawberry frosted from like uh, Dunkin' Donuts. That's whatever. This is strawberry iced, people. Strawberry iced. I'm talking about the greatest donut in history. And what I mean by strawberry iced is this. Imagine taking like maybe a dozen strawberries, okay? Putting them into a bowl, pureeing them, okay? Throwing in some granulated sugar. Maybe a little you know, teaspoon of like uh, vanilla, something like that. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, it's the greatest frosting ever, okay? And this frosting on top of a donut, especially the cinnamon donut, it's the Obco donut. I tried to make that frosting the other day. I got pretty close, pretty close. And what I need to do is figure out how to make the donut better. I got to figure out how to do that cinnamon thing they're doing fried and cinnamon all together at one time. Cinnamon sugar, whatever, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about, right? That cinnamon goodness, it's like the sugar, sugar donut, you know, all the sugar, huh? yeah, and then frosted strawberry on top and iced strawberry. I'm talking about like sugar with real strawberries in it, people. That's not the frosting you get on a regular Dunkin' Donut. Those are crap. I love it. People be like, oh, well, I have the, I know the greatest donut shop. They have the best strawberry frosted donut. I'm like, you don't get it. Strawberry frosted is not the same thing. I'm not talking about a strawberry cream cheese frosting donut that they make at these donut shops. I'm talking about strawberry icing, which is basically sugar and strawberries. Then it's like hardened. How do they, how do they do that? It's hardened on top, just like it looks like the frosting. So I called the guy. I was like, look, I want to get a dozen. He goes, yeah, come on down. And then all of a sudden, we realize that it's about an hour out of our way to go there. Like, it's, it's 11 hours, guys. 11 hours to go where we're going. And, like, it's another hour. So it would be 12 hours. But more importantly, we would be an hour later to our destination. And there's a reason why I wanted to get to this destination on time. And... Bottom line, people, is we got to the destination on time, but I did not have a chance to get my Abco donuts. And that was very sad. I'm waiting now. I think Mary M should be calling in any second. I did see a notification from her, so let me just check and see. And it was sad to not get these Abco donuts, but I'll tell you what we got, and it's an even better thing. So I've been married going on 13 years. We have three kids. My son's... Social security number is like my birthday. Every single... I'm 41378. And throughout his entire social security number is that. It's like throughout. 13, 4, 7, 4, 13, 7. I'm like, what? How did that happen? Okay, just weird stuff. And so I'm going on my 13th year. And we're now we're... We have my, my daughter's at an age right now. She's like, I want a dog, you know? And we're like, no dogs until the, old, the youngest is old enough, you know? And she just turned five. And I think that's the time, you know? All right, my brother, so, so come back when you can. Um, and so that's the time. So today we drove down, we took a journey down, and, and we bought a, our first family dog. And I'm really kind of pumped about that. <laughs> it's really cool to have a family dog. So I'm going to show you a photo of our pup in a little bit. But let me see if Mary Ann is with us yet. 
All right. She's not with us, so what I'm going to do is quickly play you a face swap, and then we will get Mary M on the phone very quickly, very shortly. Um, I mean, maybe I should show you the picture of Max. You guys want to see Max? That's Max right there. Check out my buddy. What? Isn't he a cutie? Oh, my goodness. I want to go upstairs and grab that kid. Look at him. He's a cutie pie. I think I have another one. Hold on. That's Max number... That's one picture of Max, but this is probably the better picture of Max. Look at him. Isn't it cutie? Oh, my goodness. Look at that little monkey. Oh, wow. Uh, I saw... I've never been... I haven't personally been a dog owner before. Never had a little guy. Look at that little monk. So, really pumped to have little Max. And he's a baby, so, you know, we get to see him grow up and get to teach him, hopefully, good things. And with three young kids that are kind of dealing with the craziness of energy, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> so we're like, guys... He was born in an Amish farm. Like, they, they go to sleep at whatever time. Lights out. Do you know what I mean? So this dog is used to going to sleep early. So that's the other challenge. I have to figure out what am I going to do with playing music here on Real Talk. Because right now he's, he's right up above me, like a couple feet away from where I am on the next floor up, you know, sleeping. Hopefully he'll stay asleep all night. I don't know. But we already had our first uh, situation. I'll tell you what, though. This guy is cool. He was in the car for, with us for five and a half hours, and he just kicked it. He's cool. Looked up every once in a while. We took him out. Cool. I couldn't believe this. I took him out. He held it the whole time, went and peed. He held it. He goes, and he goes, poop, poop. Like, what? He's like, sleepy, sleep sofa Joe. He's like, he holds it at least. And so it's just pretty cool, guys. I'm excited to be a dog owner for the first time. And it's, it's a pretty cool thing. It's a pretty cool thing. So any tips you guys have, shoot them over. And I'm thinking at some point, whether it's, I don't think it's tonight, but at some point I'm going to be, have him hanging out with me on my lap here, just kicking it. Because he's still young. Like, I think he'll chill it out with us. I'll be like, yo, you want to chill out over here, Max? And he'll be like, right? I mean, I'm thinking. Let me check out and see if Mary Ann is on a very special face swap tonight. Um... Let me see. She sent me a message. Let me just check something, people. My people! Alright, so she's going to call in. Let me just do this. I see this. Oh my goodness. Kills me when I see that. Um... All right, so let me quickly play you something while we're waiting for Miriam. She should be with us any second. So three kids, a dog, going on 13 years of marriage, and going on my second complete year of real talk when we get to the end of this year. And we're, almost, we're, we're, we're closing in on it, guys. We are at day 573 in a row. I just want to just get some... I just want to put a little gravity to this for a second. So on day 365 in a row was uh, New Year's Eve. And we started the second year of Real Talk. And I remember a couple people right before were like, so that's great. Are you done? Are you going to just kind of go on occasionally now? Once you, you did a year, that's amazing. Like, you're going to just kind of go on occasionally now? I'm like, what? Dude, this train is just getting going. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you serious? Oh, oh, no, no. Keep holding your breath. <laughs> We're here. This is a necessity for not only you, but for me. And what I mean by that is self-expression. Like We've got to be able to express ourselves. And for me, it's coming out here every single night and, and having a conversation with you, getting people like Mary M on the phone and Ryan last night. And going forward, we're going to just be interviewing people like crazy. On Zoom, we're on quarantine. Take advantage of it. But I got a dog now, so he's going to be kicking it on my lap. And maybe he'll be adding a little something. Like, roop, 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 roop. I'll be like, yeah, did you hear what he said? Max asked you a question. Answer the question. <laughs> if you don't answer the question, you're not welcome on the show anymore. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Uh, so anyway, let's see if Miriam's live on the Zoom channel yet. 
nope, she's still uh, delayed. Let's do this, people. I'm going to show you something while we're waiting for Mary. Yeah, that should be any moment. Okay, I'm going to play you guys episode 13 of The Trump Show. I was really excited about this one. I completed it a few days ago. Here we go. It's Haverhill and Jameson with the exclusive Donald Trump with episode 13 of The Donald Trump Show. Thank you very much for joining me on episode 13 of The Donald Trump Show. Tonight, we're talking about this stupid ad that just came out. Did you see this sleep sofa? That's right. He's sitting with Obama. They're sitting together. Actually, I thought Joe was going to fall asleep a few times, but Obama, I guess he's pretty charismatic. He kept his attention. So let's get to it. I don't understand his inability to get a sense of what people are going through. That's very interesting, Joe. I'm wondering if you'll ever be able to get a sentence out without sounding like you're falling asleep. He just can't, he can't relate in any way. <laughs> I can't relate, that's funny. I can't relate to your communist leanings, no, sleeps over Joe, that I could not relate to. One of the things that I have always known about you, Joe. It's the reason why I wanted you to be my vice president and the reason why you were so effective. Effective? He was effective at smelling young girls' hair and whispering in their ears. But what else did Sleep Sofa Joe do while he was in the White House? Ways in which presidents motivate people. By doing something really ignobling, ignobling, doing something really ignobling, I believe Joe thinks that ignoble is a good word. Ignobling, important, and people go, oh, or to do something really bad. Oh, wait, sleep sofa, you've got me confused now because ignoble means dishonorable, and then you said really good or really bad. I, I'm really confused, sleep sofa. I think you're not really sure what the dictionary Definition is for ignoble. This guy has generated a sense out there that people are waking up to that he ran by deliberately dividing people from the moment he came down that escalator. Eh, uh, wrong. I've been connecting people to the truth, sleep sofa. That you, Obama, and all of your cronies have been taking advantage of this country you for 44 years, I don't know how that has been possible. I think people are now going, I don't want my kid growing up that way. Wait, hold, hold on, Sleepy. So you're telling me kids don't want to grow up winning? Oh, no, they want to be losers like Sleep Sofa Joe. Joe, they all want to be winners, okay? Stop telling people to lose. I shouldn't be surprised, though. Big vice president is like winning the silver medal at the Olympics. You know what it's like as much as anybody. You're what are we talking about now? Falling asleep on camera? Pooping your pants? Just elaborate, Barack. To be in the White House during a crisis. Oh, I'm sure you got a lot of great information out of Bobblehead Joe. You know what it's like to have to... I just have to ask, why does it take Barack so long to form, like, the simplest of sentences? Get laws passed through Congress. You know, I'm really glad you brought that up, Barack, because Sleep Sofa Joe does have some experience drafting the crime bill in 1994 that put a lot of people in jail. Too many to count, I believe. You know what it's like to deal with foreign leaders. Barack Obama with another direct hit. How did you do in Ukraine, Joe? That's right. And how about your son, Hunter? Been looking for him. I have a couple of questions. Attorney Bill Barr will be calling him. You may want to let your son know. Uh, you know what it's like and how lonely it can be. Look, you're probably right, Barack. It must get really lonely for Sleep Sofa Joe, those couple of thoughts running through his head on a daily. It's okay, Joe, just take a nap. To make tough decisions where not every decision is going to be perfect, but you got to make them. 
You know, Barack, it's kind of hard for Joe to make any decisions at this point. And to take responsibility for it? I do have to say I give that to Sleepsover. I've heard him say he's going to do a boom, 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 so he does take responsibility for his poopers. Uh... Okay, does it or does it not seem like Barack is thinking the same thing? And, and the thing I've got confidence in, Joe, is, is your heart and your character and, and the fact that you are going to be able to reassemble. Okay, so wait a second. What is sleep so for? Bumbling Biden going to reassemble. He can't even assemble a sentence. He doesn't remember his name half the time. He said he's Joe Biden's husband, Joe Biden. That's stupid. Reassemble the kind of government that cares about people and brings people together. Look, I think Joe could bring people together for a nice nap. Okay, but he's not going to accomplish anything except be the Muppet puppet for the left. I have to laugh, though, Barack. You say to help and care for people, but you're the ones who are causing all the problems right now. Anyhow, this was the 13th episode of the Donald Trump Show. We're going to continue to dig deep into the sleep sofa and find what's in the cushions. And I'll see you tomorrow at the next Donald Trump show. My people. Hi, Mark. Uh-oh. How Hold are on, you? I don't want to see that yet. Mary M is with us, people. Check it out. Hey, Mary Hi, Am. Hello. Hello. How are you? You have a doggy now. I have a doggy. I can't wait to show he, you the picture. He baptized the place with a poop. <laughs> he baptized the place with well, more than a poop. You know, I mean... The good thing I gotta say about this guy is he I'm held it. He, he held it like on the car ride back, five and a half hours. Like we stopped twice, but he held it until we took him out both times. And I think when he got here, he just was kind of getting used to his space. Maybe I, I don't know, but he's like no, a little. It's it's also t yes. He was holding it. It's territorial. It's a little blessing. He's a little a puppy. Little... He's a little pup. He drove twelve hours to pick up this pup from. Where? Oh my goodness, it's insane. Um, we what? drove. <laughs> Why 12 hours? 12 hours in total. Not 12 hours, yeah, 12 hours in total. So basically, the bottom line was we went to um, Amish country. So oh. we, we tried to do a rescue. We tried to do a rescue for a while, but the problem getting a puppy during rescue right now with, with coronavirus. Like everybody's getting puppies, so we every time we tried the the big thing was the fence thing. We still don't have a fence. I mean, we have a big yard, and we don't have a fence currently, you know. And they're like, "Oh, well, people who have a fence are going to get it before you." And we're like, "I'll put a fence up if I get a dog, but I'm not going to put a fence up until I have a dog." <laughs> you know, like I don't need it. I actually think it 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 takes away from the the beauty of the yard or the property of how all of our properties are all just kind of connected, and to put be the only yeah. guy with a fence is. But if I have to do it for a dog, I will, you know. Or a deer so fence. Puppy, maybe. Pu puppy rescues are up during the Rona. Is that yeah, it? I think so because every, everybody's like, oh, how about well. Cat, how about cat <laughs> adoptions? Probably that too, but I don't, I unfortunately don't. We weren't looking for cats, so I wouldn't be able to say specifically. <laughs> okay. But check this out. This is what our little guy, this is, uh, this is Max. Oh, yeah, show me. Do you see him there? I don't know if you can see that on Wait, screen on I YouTube. Looking? It may be there, it may not. Let me see. I'm going to flash it there, and then I got a second photo I'm popping on as well. Let's see. Oh, so cute. That's Max right there. He's just like the cutest little monkey. And yeah, I just... So the kids love... You have two kids? Oh, we have three kids. Three kids. And you know what? We went to see a bunch of rescues, and our youngest was, like, freaked out because they were jumping all over her. And, you know, for a kid that's her age, it's they want to have a tame puppy, you know? So we went, and this... I got to say, I still can't believe this. We went... I see the puppy laying there, and... It, we were nervous about this because I and you. I know you. I got your message about the donuts. <laughs> I don't. I made donuts, and I got your message about that. But there's this place, New Jersey, greatest donut ever. And I had a plan to stop and get them, but we had to pass on it because it's an hour out of the way. Because we're driving to get this dog, and there were like so there were f this this uh, litter. There were five puppies, and we wanted Max. And 
there was a chance because it was an Amish. We don't know how it's set. It's not like a place where they go, they ask you, and they go and get the puppy. Like, you show up, and the puppies are all sitting there. We didn't want someone showing up. That that dog is special. I mean, he's such a cutie. And we want someone to be like, oh, yeah, that's the one. And then they take our puppy. So we were like, we want to get there as quick as possible, as early as possible. My so wife. What, you looked at photos before? You looked through Zoom at the puppies? We had been looking on every pet site possible to try to find something. Our oldest daughter is the one who's, like, been pushing picture. this. I'm sorry? You saw a picture. Yeah, we saw we saw basically this. Like This is like the picture they showed of, of Max right here, where you see his little snout, this beautiful little cute face here. He's got this little, this. it's actually gray. It's hard to see, but his, his, this spot on his eye is like really dark gray. And it's like he's like an Australian shepherd, so he's got like that look to him, you know? Well, he's got that um, and an English shepherd, so he's got like a, a look of um, a lot of gray in his, in, in his ear, which is really cool. Um, and there, the other ones looked different. Like he just looks completely unique and the kids, my daughter fell in love with it, with him. And then, so the youngest one, when she saw him today, she was like, Ehh. and that was the coolest thing to see these smiles. And I never had a dog of my own. I always had one when I was a kid, but this is the first time we have a dog as a family dog, which is kind of cool. That's nice. It's nice to hear about family. So Aww. two things are, how are you doing? And number two, do you have a way to turn up your volume a little bit? Yeah, so is it better like this? I've been hearing, um, what's the deal? Let me see if you have a little more volume. I tried to pump you up in, in here. Let me see if I can get you louder on. Oh, wait a second. Let me try something. Um, keep talking into the microphone the way you were. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, let me see if hello? I'm on the wrong thing. Maybe it's not that. Maybe it's USB. Let me check that. Keep talking. Hello, oh, there we go. hello, hello. Keep, hello. Okay, I let think... I think that's better. Yeah, because I can undo and one sec. I just I just boosted your level up here, so I think if you just bring the microphone a little closer to you, you should be good. So how are you doing? Yeah, Rob said that the 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 uh, the audio is a little light. Hold on, now you're cutting out. Now it sounds like you're going through a tunnel. Yeah, one second. Oh, now that's better. That was actually like perfect volume. It was like nice and loud. <laughs> I like Tad's idea. You, or I'll delete your comments. You're funny, buddy. But yeah, dude, guys, would be awesome. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Mary M's getting, getting all lined up here. You know what I'm going to do? So I made a very special face swap for Mary M tonight um, that maybe I should play while she is getting... Is uh, better? Yeah! Okay. okay. Well, you can still play the the swap. I yeah, mean, let's how play. How are you is a, is a loaded question. So okay. I'll think about my answer while you play your... Yeah, we have a lot to, to chat about as always. Um, and yes. I, and I, that's why it was good we start early because we tend to chat for a while. And uh, we're going to probably do that again tonight. But I did have a very interesting uh, uh, thing that is... It's happening right now. It's 11-11 right now, actually, where I am, Miriam. And uh, there's a phone call coming in and I think we should take it. Uh, hold on a second. Let's see if we can get it. <laughs> Uh, Donald? Hi, Mark. Hi. How are you? Good, Donald. Saturday Night Live. Yes. So excited to be calling in. Well, I have Mary Ann on with me tonight. Oh, yep. oh I'm sorry. I didn't realize that you had Mary Ann on tonight. Yeah. Down the rabbit hole. I've been tuning in. Love the content. Look, Mary Ann, I know that you have a problem with masks. For a while, I didn't wear one. I told people I shouldn't wear them. They're stupid. But the bottom line is I have to hedge my bets, Mariam. I'm trying to win an election here. I get it. So wear the friggin' masks. I don't care. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you're feeling okay, you shouldn't be going at getting a test. That's what true. The hell? Oh, I'm going to go get a test to see if I have coronavirus. <laughs> Stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh, I had to go take a test to see if I had coronavirus. <laughs> Guess what? I have it. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, I do. I can't believe it. I don't feel anything, but still, I have coronavirus. The numbers are through the roof, people. Look, see, the numbers, they're through the roof. 
I love, but tell me, what does this guy have to say? Well, look, let me tell you something I thought was very interesting is all of the content about the race wars. Oh, this is this was supposed and to come also, out. Also, Fauci, <laughs> I'm starting to try to find my own case against the Fauci. I've been uh, seeing a lot of this hashtag out. fire Fauci, and I've been looking into it. I believe you said too, Mary, that six presidents is six too many. They should just fire the Fauci. But look... The people in America seem to like Fauci, so uh, maybe you could tell Mark what your problem is with Dr. Fauci. I'll, I'll tune in, okay? No, no. And I'll see you tomorrow. I've got to get going now. Melania is waiting for me. I but I will see you tomorrow. I'm coming back for Trump Show, episode number 14. Awesome. So tune in. Have a good night. See Bye, Miriam. See you next week. Wow, that's a private special message for Mary M from Donald J. Trump. Well, that's kind of crazy. Um, so anyway, he did say something, or he had a question for you, a couple questions. He said that he thinks that people in the United States of America love Fauci. I, I think even your mother loves Fauci, actually, if, I'm, <laughs> if I recall. <laughs> well, it's not that she, let's, let's clarify. Maybe it's that he's respected or actually... He has a track record as far as the, the, the uh, public is the concerned. Opt- yeah, the, the optics. And the thing is this, that they're languaging, because now the Ministry of Truth is alive and well, and new speak and double speak, And so it's very convincing. But actually, I just tweeted, because I tweet every once in a while, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, um, you know, like 15 different things that he flip-flopped on and i think i, I saw that t- one yeah the, with the masks this morning all, all the things on on his watch under these six presidencies all these you know i call him the pandemic impresario and i would love nothing more than to him to like just get canned and for the deep state to go far far away well there's a good chance that happens you know what is, i saw something that blew my mind and i don't know if you caught this video it was a, a lady from yugoslavia and she was talking about how her country fell do you happen to see this it was on uh, no i didn't see it Tell me. i should see if i could find it we should pull or maybe someone could pull it up and send it to us rob is on with us tad's here with us brian sig hello um everybody say hi to mary M. and we're about to get into it if you have any questions throw them on over uh so mary M, this this Yugoslavian lady, she's talking to basically the Americans. She says, look, I just am giving you a warning. And this is what happened in my country. And she said, my, my dictatorship or c- communist country started changing the term to socialism. And she said, and we, our country fell apart. You know, I mean, you saw what happened in Yugoslavia. And she said, this is the, all they did was they had to do one thing specifically. It was divide the nation. They had to divide people to hate each other, create hatred. And that was enough for them to instill what they did. And they're already getting us. They're half, three quarters of the way there. I saw someone get a ticket the other day for not wearing their mask properly. Had the mask on, but he was calling his mother, put the mask down, probably because he was going to pass out or something breathing through some stupid mask that's like cloth, doing nothing except creating bacteria. Yeah. But it's an interesting thing where you start seeing these people who've experienced communism, who've experienced the fall of a nation, and they start speaking to us clearly about it and saying, look, aren't you, don't you see the signs? This is it. Look what happened not more than 25 years ago. And it's, it's happening right now. And under Biden... He's going to fall asleep and someone's going to do it under his watch. And he's going to be like, what happened? I was I was taking a nap. Yeah, on the sleep sofa. I saw the exact same video, but from a Venezuelan young woman. Maybe that was it? I don't know. Well, well was it Yugoslavia or Venezuela? This she was said woman. Yugoslavia, so maybe yours was a different one. Tell me yeah. about yours. It was, it was basically saying I left Venezuela and I'm seeing the exact... Same thing happened, and it starts with the statues. And I, I, I left, and it becomes communism. And it's sobering to run into people here over the past week. I have ventured out to the beach, and it's very magical here. You, you see people, and you have these... It's like someone told me today, I felt like I needed to come here, and, and now I know why. And, and we bonded over bees. 
And then I, I ran into two people on by the beach where it's a Rona safe zone. And one of them does plant medicine. The other one has a Shabbat on Fridays at his home. And he said, like, anyone that comes and, and, and is saying not, we're, we need to social distance, don't come back. Like, really? we are not welcoming fear here. Anyone is welcome. Uh, because I, I told him I didn't know whether you're still having Shabbat because, I mean, I any ritual, any gathering, any especially meaningful conversation, because here there's also at the cafe at the bottom where I, I got banned for half an hour and then I went and I spoke to them. They have a sign stating not to talk about the coronavirus. And I was at I was on my phone at the at the cafe and I was doing voice to text and some hippies pointed like condescendingly to the sign and said like basically it's like okay you want to live in your bliss, bliss bubble it's that's that's why it's like when people call me a hippie like a I'm like one part woo I'm very grounded I'm looking at science and I'm not evading anything I respect if you want to stay in your bliss as we usher in communism and the new world order. So it's, it's, it's interesting to, to meet people and they're independently acknowledging that the Democrats are ruining the country, that BLM is, is, B, is BS, that how many, like I just read about this black man, Burnell, who was reportedly murdered for holding a Trump in broad daylight, broad daylight, so how many countless cops, humans have died since George Floyd? What about their lives? How about this black man's life? So, anyway, there was a whole bunch. In well, there, but- and the thing is, and this is what you're getting to, is the only life that matters is George Floyd's. <laughs> exactly. Like you Bottom said, what is 96 96- 96 memorials is not enough. 96 memorials, a gold casket that he can't fit in. Um, you know, millions I, and millions and millions and millions and millions raised like yeah, the oh Darnella Frazier who yeah. raised half a million, half a million dollars. Wow. I was speaking to someone. I'm going to be on the radio show. He was talking about a man called Alex Newman who I would like to interview, who apparently has looked into GoFundMe, which is basically exactly like I've said, a Ponzi scheme associated with Big Pharma. And this young black girl who supposedly, she says she's not even involved in the campaign. The campaign ambassador says that she's doing it with the mom. And she tells Twitter and she, or on her, sorry, FAQ, it's legitimate because it's backed by Twitter and GoFundMe. Wow. Like really, um, so well, just to, just... but you know, to tie up, I want to go back to something because I want to make sure we, we press on this a little more. When you talk about how the Democratic Party currently in this moment right now is current, they're trying to steal this next election because they know they're the guy at the helm is a sleep sofa. He's going to start working at a place called Sleep out. Sofa Joe's. And yeah, he's going to get swapped, get swapped out. out. He has to because he's a mental. And I think it's an act. I don't know. Even if it's not, I think he's a mental. And the bottom line is this, is you can't you can't look at the party and say, well, they're not the same party that did not vote for black uh, for the slavery to be abolished. Zero percent from the Democratic Party, zero percent for the right to vote. Ninety nine percent from the Republican Party to vote. And I think it was also for the abolishment of slavery, slavery. Zero from the Democratic Party on both of those things. And now they're trying to position the races against each other 100 years, 150 years later. And effectively, people are buying effectively, it. that's and the thing. People the, are buying. People are buying. The media machine is so powerful that people are effectively taking that all of that garbage and, and swallowing it. And they don't realize that it's putting fat all over them. I think the sorcery is powerful, but I think legacy media is dying and also desperate and that we are the silent majority. I really believe that more and more. It's the cognitive dissonance happens even within myself when I'm like, they can't be that evil, right? They can't, this can't, this level of evil, it's impossible. I know. Desperation, it's like, 
So imagine the person who's just waking up or who doesn't know or is a hippie who's like, I don't want to hear anything. And they, Bill Gates had a presser yesterday with 400 mayors and was applauding the compliance, the, effect, the efficacy. You know, they must, I keep saying this, they must be laughing. You think it's just a coincidence that I hashtag I can't breathe with the masks. Today, I went to do my braid and it was at a hotel to celebrate. It was at a three-year-old's birthday party. And when the, my friend told me we're, we're having it there, it's at a hotel so you can just come and I'll do your, do your braid, um, I thought to myself, I got a feeling this party's going to get busted. A three-year-old. So, get to the. I get to the hotel, and I see right away a cop. Lights on. The, of course, the, the the it's more of a truck, so it's like a ambulance police. Uh, the policia here, mm -hmm. and I'm like, Miriam, you're right. So it's low key. So pass by the person who's who is at behind the counter of the hotel, eco hotel, whatever, is wearing a mask by herself. Okay, the cop is wearing a mask in the fresh air. This is jungle near the ocean. Then the people behind the counter masked. Then I'm walking to where my friends are. None of, none of my community, none of them are wearing. They're like in their bathing suits. They're eating food. The kids are in the pool. Like it was weird because it's like, wow, I'm going into what it used to be like just back in January. But then behind... And then the the cop came and busted the three year old party, and we oh. had to leave. So unbelievable. And you're and you're like, I cannot believe I can, there's there's a man at the end of the of the hill. Um, it was suggested to me to start drinking coconut water because I'm having a lot of edema, and my my hormones are a little wonky. Anyway, so this old old cute man, like on a chair selling pipas for like n less than two dollars with a mask and i can't communicate with him and even if there was another couple at the cafe he was american she was tico and i'm like you know those cloth masks those diaper masks do nothing uh, those, and yeah. i'm like you're recirculating your air your viral particles your 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 subject to epoxia your um co2 levels are and he's like the parents the parents of the Tico girlfriend are so afraid that he they he, they told him if you're going to take our daughter out into the wild, you must wear. So so yesterday I was up late, and I I was thinking of like what's the next skit I'm going to do because I did a little music video on the beach, and I thought, and I saw J P Spears and he did. He did a whole skit on how it's going to look like when they reopen the gyms. Like, you have to wear a mask the whole time. In fact, my girlfriend in Texas got into an argument because she almost fainted because she had to do her workout in a mask. Oh, yeah. I've, so, heard, that. I've heard that. Yeah. People so have been passing I, out in their cars. Exactly. So this whole and, and J.P. Spears has done a, a riff on that. So I'm like, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use Michael Jackson's "Take Off the Mask" song, and I'm gonna do a whole skit on how I've started wearing the mask inside my house. By myself. <laughs> well, I, that's hilarious. Because can I say something funny today? So I was just ripping on people today. I'm with my wife. We're driving five and a half hours. Five and a half hours, right? Mm -hmm. And I would just like be looking in cars as we're going. I'm like, what is this freaking idiot doing over here by themselves driving with a mask on the Garden State Parkway? Like, oh, I may get the coronavirus while I'm driving alone in my car. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I would just be, and I'm yelling at people. While I'm, she's driving. I'm like, look at this moron. And she's like, oh, why? Another one with masks? And I'm like, yeah, it's just them in the car, husband and wife. <laughs> but isn't. It, it, what's the what's the saying? The shafe, how to separate? What's the saying? Isn't it a great way to separate? Um, at least, like we know what's the crazy from. Sense oh my goodness! And, and who is he drinking? The yeah, who's sugar, really over over the top? Yeah, Kool Aid. Um, yeah. But it's also it's it's also it's also to divide. It's it's also to divide and and 
Yeah, it's so I was going to do this this skit. So I'm looking at all the the points to do it in a very sarcastic way. And I wore the mask, my diaper mask, <laughs> for for about 10, 12 minutes. And I was like, oh my god, I'm I'm feeling nauseous. And I was like, how? And so today, Mark in Florida, they're saying it's not mandatory, but they're saying that the the risk you get you're more susceptible when you're living in a household with many people and it is suggested that you wear a mask so you in your home with your three children and wife you would best be wearing a cloth mask i listened in to the presser for the cdc as a journalist as called in in the morning they were they were rolling out the guidelines okay for the children the children are all going to be encouraged to wear cloth masks. They're going to do six feet distancing and they're going to be spraying disinfectants that are toxic. What? They're, they're going to be spraying. And, and then, well, yeah, they're going to, well, they're not going to be, it's not going to be silver and vinegar and tea tree oil the way, I, you know, I, what I use to clean, to clean and kill things. It's going to be, oh, the fomites, you know, the surfaces. The, the, the surfaces. So, yeah, part of my skit is like, my get the Rona. And the, you know, the surfaces might be like, oh, just in the next room. Um, yeah, you could so have it, it sit on the wall. It actually came true <clears throat> that they're, they're suggesting wearing a mask, in a your useless home. mask in the house. That's unbelievable. You know what? It gets me thinking, though. The whole point of this is to get people to comply. And, and they start getting, and this is almost what I'm wondering because I've seen JP, some of his skits, they're hilarious. Like, this yeah, is the type of thing where what you do is you take that bit. And you're just like, you just completely to just, you reach even crazier and crazier and see how many people are like, yeah, no, they told us that we have to wear the mask in our butt. And then at the end of the day, like, and see how many people actually do it. And they're like, oh, they got it, these people to yes. do it. And Did you see the sex gui- guidelines from the CDC. Um, no. I don't know where, where it was. It's like, they actually use the word glory hole. Um, Interesting. So you, so you wear a cloth like the Hasidic Jews. To wear, to avoid saliva. Like, what oh, sex without kissing? Goodness. That's that like, movie. There's that movie with Stallone. Uh, Sorry? There's a movie with Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> and he's in, he's like, Judge Dredd. Something like that. And they can't have sex. He's brought back to life. And they're like, have some virtual experience now because they've nobody's allowed to touch anymore. I swear we're going towards this freaking Judge Dredd oh, yeah. Movie. There was a movie in <laughs> two, 2016 called The Equals. And it's forbidden to, if you have emotions, especially for another person, that's a disease. And you're, you're, you have only certain time left wow. um, before you degrade. And they're chipped. And there's the two characters Demolition Man, fa- Brian said. fall in love, and in the end, um, he's caught, and he gets he gets vaccinated, and loses because he's lobotomized. So I was saying I did a tweet like I refuse to get vaccinated. And oh, me too. If you, if you agree, and one woman said I agree, but I'm going to try to hold it off as much as I can because I want to, because I want to go back to living. Which was like, uh, I said, honey, if you think you're going to be lobotomized and genetically modified, if you think you're going to go back to living after you get injected, like, I'm, I'll just take the bullet. I'm not going to get vaccinated. You're not putting anything inside. I don't even want you to put a swab. So now, August, 20, August 1st, they're claiming that they're going to open up the borders to the UK and Canada. They said the US, but I don't believe it because the US is supposedly infested with bloated fat numbers, bloated fake numbers. Fake, so, fake numbers. So then, so then I looked at the story again, and I'm like, if I were to leave, in order to come back, I have to show the epidemiology. I have to show that, that I'm a negative. That means I have to get tested. That means I have to get a swab that I've known has been contaminated that can – arguably cross the blood brain barrier although now they say there's another one and then i found an article in the nih i believe where they're doing vaccine mucoli through the nose they're 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 when they swab you i don't do not put anything up my nose do not touch me do not touch me it's a good time to get a gun like what will happen 
uh, then then you go you go ballistic. And this is again the real virus, fear and hate. I was watching yesterday. Was it on Hannity? I think it was on H Hannity. He had an exclusive with President Trump. Or no, no, sorry, it was the press secretary. Uh, she cut away to Portland where there's a woman that says, I hope you, I think she's referring to the cops, you and all your family members die. I saw that. Yeah. And that in that moment, up. I was like, I would want to shoot that woman in the face. And I'm like, caught myself. I'm like, oh my God, see how infectious the, the hate, hate is? That's uh, terrible. Right? It's terrible. And I'm like, no, Miriam, do not like, Send don't that succumb. Person. I don't know. What's the solution? <clears throat> Send them love? Because yeah. That's all you can do. It's so funny. You know what I do? This is my favorite thing in the world. When someone screams at you, when someone gives you the finger while they're driving or they're screaming at you through their window with road rage, you know what I like to do? I'll either give them a thumbs up and smile or I'll wave at them and smile. Hi, like a Hi. And I just want to disarm them because at the end of the day, when people realize how silly they're being and like, you know, come back to the moment, buddy, you know, like, and no one's in the moment at all right now. They're so distracted by this world of hate that's been created by the media machine that we're talking about. And the only thing that we can say and do is continue to lead with our own truth. And to me, the, that truth is positivity. The problem with all of the other garbage out there right now is it's it's hatred because it's 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 not truth. Therefore, it's negativity, and it's always going to bring down a situation. And if you watch any of these channels, just just stand back and be like, ugh. That's what I feel like. I'm like, ugh. Nobody the tells the truth. Media, the mainstream media coverage? Yeah, like I feel like CNN, I'm like, okay, let me see if I can get a straight story. No, it's all like Donald Trump is a racist xenophobe. Like, can't you just lead with, today uh, we found out that we're going to be paying less for insulin thanks to the president. And you know what? He's also a jerk because of X, Y, and Z. No, no, they have to just talk about the jerk yeah. stuff. And it's just like, I don't get it. Every once in a while talk about the good. Did he also repeal uh, kickbacks the other day? Like I watch him. I watch him, but I, but I was, I've been this week, but I'm a little bit disappointed. Why? What happened? Uh, because, because, well, I saw him on Chris Wallace and it was, I felt it was a 20 minute interview. Mr. Wallace's President. Son. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that one. He's got that. Uh, he tried to go after Trump. Yeah. <clears throat> but, but I found, I found Trump to be one of the most humane where I saw his humanity and he was talking about the fatality rates, and it's like, listen, Chris, you're citing John Hopkins. That's the these are the fatality rates that you're you're going by. Bill Gates funded John Hopkins. Ugh. So I, I found I found um, Trump to be to show some really human moments there, and then I'm disappointed that he gave two billion dollars to Pfizer. I know he has to tread if this is not all political theater tread a fine line uh you know it's a chicken or egg what comes first the elections or the vaccine yeah. so i i understand that i hope like why is it that many of us think or have come up with like is he going to get assassinated did you did you see what pelosian pelosian said this week no what did she say whether whether he knows it or not, I cut the clip, whether he knows it or not, he's go getting out of the White House, even if he has to be fumigated. Wow. Can you send that to me? Because I'll use yeah. that in my next Trump show. <laughs> I got to make a 14th episode tomorrow. So I'd love to use that clip. I actually, I got a bunch of other stuff I'm planning on using, but I'll throw that one in there because she is poison. She's poison. Everything she touches. Brian, right? She touches it. It turns to poison. <laughs> Oh, let's see. Let me go back through some of these. Tad, you're right. Demolition Man. And that was also Brian. Thank you for picking that out. Um, RC, this is a positivity platform, buddy. Uh, stick around and check out what it's really about because first impressions aren't always correct, apparently, for you, buddy. Sig, my friend. And Brian, Johns Hopkins got Tim Ferriss, Ivy League chill. Which Brian is this? I'm wondering if it's my friend Brian or it's it's someone else. Uh, um, which which one was that? I'm I'm trying to find the the uh, I'm 
trying to find the clip, but I was saying which Brian. I'm I'm not on your channel because I'm looking for this. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see. Brian Davidson. Oh yeah, that's my friend Brian. That's your buddy. Hi Brian. Yes. A very awake human. <laughs> he said, "I'm your friend Brian." <laughs> Good man, Brian. You know what? I always say support is the most amazing thing in the world. And when people support their friends, it's even better. But a lot of times people are so busy, they don't have time to support they, And anybody. the thing is, like, I haven't been a good friend in that I haven't reached out to my friends because I feel, I feel like 24 hours is, I have 10 hours and I'm just constantly, like, wake up and now I'm, I'm you know, trying to meditate in the morning and trying to exercise. But I'm just constantly, I, I'm just want to inhale as much information as possible. You know what's crazy right now? I hear this little monkey puppy upstairs barking Ooh. away. Oh, you sent that to me. Okay, let me pull that up. Yeah, w w can we watch it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Let me pull this up. Are you wanting to bring the puppy? I totally want to grab him and like have him hang out, but my wife was like, no, you got to let him just get used to his <laughs> environment. I'm like, he's a day old to us. Let him, let him hang out with me on the Real Talk show for the night. <laughs> um, there's a crazy thing I want to talk to you about. Ryan was on last night. And we were talking about this. Yeah, how was it? It was so I much fun. I interviewed him this week. Oh, you did? Did you post it yet? No, I didn't post it because I'm I'm gonna edit it. I'm gonna do cutaways and, um, and such. Let me get so back. Hopefully, in your it won't Twitter. take me two months. No, but I it think was, it's nice. It was to a do lovely, that, lovely man. He's great. Lo lovely interview. So how how was it yesterday? It was great. You know what we did? Oh, wait, you sent that to me on Facebook, right? Yes. Okay, I cannot hear. believe, Mark, sorry, I cannot believe the amount of viewers. I, I'm so censored. You are so censored. And then you have this, these other channels that get thousands and thousands of views. And it's, it's, just, it's just really, um, I know there's a lot of content out there. Oh, there's so much. It's crazy. You know what, but I, I hear you like, um, I, I, and this is something that I'm, I'm realizing more and more myself. Like if I change just the, if I just decide to change the titles of all my sh live shows, uh, I'd probably have a ton more people watching just because I put Trump is in every title. Well, I do it as an experiment. That's, I think I've told you that before. I think it's worth a while just as an, ex also doing it earlier. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start doing it like 6 o'clock during the week at least. Uh, let me get over here and bring this in. This is your clip? Yes. Yeah, but I, I'm absolutely going to start doing that because I have to get on earlier. This dog is not going to be handling a nighttime show. <laughs> so <laughs> that I have to realize I'm going to have to get on early. So let's see what this is real quick. This is How long is this? I'm going to open it up. Like a minute. 30 seconds. Should I open it up full screen or just put it on small? Oh, yeah, do it full, full screen. Sure. All right, check this out, guys. Ready? Here we go. Oh, let me get this over here. Oh, this is Poloison. Poloison. Look, hold on a second. I'm going to get Nancy Poloison. She's she's actually a piece of garbage. I'm just telling you. Ceremony to inaugurate a duly oh. elected president. Hold on, people. We're going to go back. President of the United States. Here we go. Leaving. Uh, just because he might not want to move out of the White House doesn't mean we won't have an inauguration ceremony to inaugurate a duly elected president of the United States. Mm. And the, uh, I just, you know, I'm second in line uh, to the presidency. And just last week, I had my regular continuation of government r briefing. This might interest you because it's, I say to them, this is never going to happen. God willing, it never will. But there is a process. It has nothing to do with if the certain occupant of the White House doesn't feel like moving and has to be fumigated out of there because the presidency is the presidency. It's not geography or location. So, so much for him. I wouldn't spend so much time on it. That's a victory for him because then we're not talking about your first more important subject, which is vicious what are we virus. going to do to stop this vicious virus that is making an assault on our, our health, our, again, our lives, our livelihood, life of our democracy. In the HEROES Act, we have $3.6 billion for vote by mail. Uh, this is very very, very important. Vote it's what is needed in our country mail. and it has Shut bipartisan it support throughout. 
I hate her. By the way, listen. I, we can we can hate Mark. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I can't hate. I hate her. She's poison. Look, uh, uh, look, uh, uh, Mary. Yeah, I gotta she tell you. She's a bottle, man. She's a boozer. She, she likes to um, one. I saw she, her down on the she's corner. She's seething. She's seething, and she says fumigate, and she's just projecting. Um, look, we're gonna we're gonna drop a hammer and rip a lid off. Because honestly, listen, this lady is poison, okay? And yeah. everything about her, did you hear this? This agenda has always been about mail-in voting because they know they're going to lose without it, first of all. Secondly, it's okay. It is beautiful to see everybody rioting in the streets, taking down statues and mayhem, hating on the police, flipping over police cars, people pooping on police cars. That's beautiful. <laughs> Let's keep getting more of that. That's okay. Hammerlin, they're ripping pooping. the light off. <laughs> Are they pooping on the popo? You didn't Literally? see that? Oh my goodness! There's a couple ladies who did this. They pooped on a car. <laughs> like, what is going on over here? <laughs> Who are these people? Who are these juvenile delinquents? What is this really the level of maturity? Is this really the quality? Can we do better, folks? I'm is I'm wondering really if there's what's happening. <laughs> I'm wondering if there's a video of that woman and if she's like while she's in the middle of pooping and looking at everybody, she's going Antifa! Like I could just see it. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I I Oh man. It's, it's a sad sight as, as how many have adopted the masks and then and then you know then the whole line of like I'm just doing my job. I'm just I went off this week. I did a Facebook live. I'm like, how about doing your job as a human being? Yes. How about doing your job as a critical thinker? How about doing your job as an individual? Every I get it. You don't want to lose your job. Everybody doesn't we're all suffering. But if you're just going to be compliant, you are doing your job to help usher in fucking communism. Excuse me. It's, like you are ruining the country. Yeah. You're not thinking. I'm sitting I'm sitting here trying to tell you guys not to be fearful for the masks. And then you're engaging in ad hominem attacks. I'm trying to relieve you from fear. And I, it's just a, it's magic. It's black magic straight up. Uh, occult sorcery, Satanism. It absolutely is because how can you explain people being fired from their positions, from their jobs for supporting and for voicing something like, I support the president of the United States of America or something simple like that? How about the man who got shot? He lost his life. Because he, he, what, he held life. a flag, you said? What did he do exactly? Did he have a hat on? He or was he... just holding a Trump vote for Trump. You can look him up. Um, Burnell, I mean, it just it just it just happened on the twenty third of July. Listen, this can I just black tell? Man. How about his black life? Yeah, how about his black life? Can I just tell you guys out that anybody that's watching right now, you could find a death and a murder to fit any agenda they want, okay? And they're all horrible. There's nothing good out there when it comes to death, when it comes to murder. They're all terrible. All of it should be dealt with. But to try to say that there's systematic a systemic racism when we had a president for eight years that we all voted in, it, we can't go backwards just because you don't like the guy that's there. And if you look at all the clips, because Mary Emma said something too, she used to be on the side of saying this guy's a jerk and he's a racist and he's a xenophobe. And then you start watching the clips. You start watching his entire 55 minute speech and you say he didn't say anything racist there but every byline said Trump the racist said he's dividing the country more he said that about the Mount Rushmore speech they said Trump is designed to riding the nation even more racist comments and I'm like okay I'm gonna watch this speech I watched the whole thing right right I heard the word America a lot is that dividing Ooh, it's just... No, 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 it's exactly, they're just, the people are just parroting. I, I never had hate for Trump. I would have never voted for Hillary. I, I w that would have never happened. Yeah. Um, no, no, too much. I, I, I did see Trump through the lens of a Democratic liberal. And definitely, I say when he says stupid shit, because he says stupid shit a, a lot. Um, but I also think he's funny. I also think like I see he's pretty oftentimes very gentle with people when he's talking. Yes, he's with the media. He can cut them down. He cannot take um, questions. But he's very he's been very gentle when, when he's been 
hearing other people's stories and he is a, a patriot and you don't hear any of these democrats talking about how he's calling out the an uh, the anarchists he's saying that we're bringing in communism whether he's playing that role um but he's standing for americans and now i think i had told you like my, year like three years ago when my white ex-boyfriend from the backwoods of Maine was telling me that the white man was being oppressed as a brown woman. I was like, what are you talking about? And now I see it. Now I see it that if you stand for being white, then you are called a uh, white supremacist. Or a racist. You know, like, or, yeah. like, or racist. Or, and when I went to the gun rally in Virginia, not knowing what to expect, knowing that I would be surrounded by guns and, and afraid to go into the kill box, what they call the kill box, which was where you have to take out any arms. And I didn't make, end up making it in there. It was super peaceful. There were African-Americans there. They left the place cleaner than when, when they came. And it was a lovely event. And it, was, and it was the same thing when I went to AMP in Florida. And so when I heard that they... When I heard that President Trump canceled the RNC because I was trying to get press tickets to go to Florida, I was like, I'll leave Costa Rica to go in and, and I want to be physically and I want to vote if it makes a difference um, and if it's in person. But chances are with the hype of the mask wearing and it's like so then it's like, OK, maybe he's going along with the mask. It's like, OK, well, you're wearing your mask now. So there's no need for mail in voting. Yeah. You're protected. Yep. And it's the same it's the same argument that with the vaccines mark. You know, it's it's like we're saying you're wearing your your di diaper mask. What are you worried are? You have your vaccine. What yeah. are you worried? You're supposed to be protected. What's the problem? And in fact, you are the ones who are putting us at risk because if you're vaccinated, you're the ones who's shedding more viral particles mm -hmm. and you are dampening your immune system and then making yourself susceptible to the rona. Therefore, you become a Conta you can be contagious. Yeah. You also, um, there's a couple things that have kind of worried me about just the test results that they're, uh, and I want to know if you hear, if there's any validity to this. So a couple things, so listen to this. I heard that, like I know for someone, for example, that gets tested once a week, it's a, it's something they did through their, their doctor asked them if they wanted to be part of a study. So every week they asked them to, to take a test and they've been negative every time. But if they were positive every single time and it's 10 weeks, they would be considered 10 positives and not one person who's positive. That's one thing I heard. The other thing I heard, and this was from John Rappaport, is if you have a cold, a regular coronavirus cold, yes, it will trigger yes, will as a coronavirus. Up. Yes. Like a COVID-19. Absolutely. <clears throat> because it's, again, the PCR, the PCR uh, test is not a diagnostic tool. Not FDA approved. It's all under UA. Kamala said that that it's not a diagnostic tool. The end of the story. And eighty one percent. So this week, um, Zach had shared a tweet from the strategist Parksdale saying that a nine year old in an, a police officer told him that a nine year old had been shot and classified. So he's like, get on it. So he called. I think, I don't know who he called, but he didn't get through. I got through to, to, I called the sheriffs, I called the cops, the police in Putnam. They did not hear of a nine-year-old. Then I called the health department, and I recorded it, and I posted it. And it's a coronavirus-related complication. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. What's that, Mary Garcia? What well, does that mean? It's a gunshot with a coronavirus attached to the back of it. Well, she said, no, no, God forbid, she wasn't shot. The girl wasn't shot. There was no proof. Later on, the next day, I, I saw that a 60-year-old had been shot, and maybe that's what was classified. But the 9-year-old, so coronavirus-related. Was she put on a ventilator, this 9-year-old? I can't tell you that because of HIPAA. Oh, HIPAA. The HIPAA that she threw out the window in California because when it comes to mental health because everything is on Zoom and therefore it, they say and I caught the le like the the legislation or the whatever ruling saying that 
you don't have uh, privacy uh, un under these laws. So she couldn't tell me whether she was vented, but she did tell me that they now have to trace everybody and do an investigation. So it's just very suspect. It's suspect. Well, how about the Kentucky couple that is was put under house arrest with... Heard about this, yeah. Like, you don't just play the game. Say that you've been that you've been qu quarantined. And so, <clears throat> again, to come, if you want to travel, that's what, they're, before their vaccines, now it's going to be, you have to show that you're a negative. So well, how is that gonna, how is that gonna happen? Well, so this is where it gets back to my previous question or what we were kind of going towards. So that you take it, that you have these couple of things where they'll, they'll list any positive as multiple positives. And then they'll say that X, Y, and Z is not, or is if someone gets hit in a motorcycle, the COVID, they're dying for heart disease, COVID. Down the line, if you were wiping away all of the BS COVID call, uh, call, called COVID cases, you would be left with a number where they'd have no standing to say everyone needs to be vaccinated. But they have to push a higher number. Everybody else in the entire world has very low numbers when it comes to deaths. At least they've gotten under control. I'm also asking a question, and I, this is all just a lot of stuff I've been wanting to ask you. We had a million people get from, we went from 2 million to 3 million people, I think it was, something like that, that now have coronavirus. But only 10,000 people died. Went to 130,000 people, and then all of a sudden a million people, and only 10,000 people. I'm like, wait a second, doesn't anybody realize either it's getting weaker, or we figured out something here in the USA, we're figuring out how to, how to handle it a little better, but it went to a, a much lower ratio this last couple months, I'd say. Well, it's 99.7% uh, recovery rate. They're arguably also taking numbers from respiratory illness deaths because, again, respiratory illnesses are the fifth leading cause of death. And it's like basically also, spoiler alert, we all die in the end. Yeah. Sorry to tell you. So if you think, like, because someone was like, I was like, meh, uh, about, I was flippant about death. First of all, I have almost died. I have, from a very young age, I, I, I to told you last time, right, my first story was covering a crematorium, and cre covering cremation rate. So just from a very early on, have faced death because my, my spiritual awakening was tied to, to this 13-year-old Mark, who was hit by a um, eighteen wheeler, and it really like blew my consciousness at three, thirteen years old. Like reading out on a limb by Shirley MacLaine, by a trying to have a near uh, an out of body experience. So from a very early on, I kind of faced death, and then I almost died. So it's not flippant. I've just realized we are mortal. Yeah. Make so if you're gonna die, live, live, folks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Live. That's a this very is good not point. living. This is not living. And, and it's just mind boggling the compliance. And so then you have Bill Gates, like basically with all the mayors, just applauding how compliant we are. And you saw he said we're going to need more than uh, one. More than one vaccine. I dropped my Dr. Evil clip again where he was saying he wants to take over yeah, the I world. Uh, and I think he's still aiming for that. I mean, I really think. It's this this whole idea where one day he's going, someone's going to do this. It's gonna, this RNA vaccine, especially, is very scary because you said too, nobody's ever used that on a human before, and they don't know what's. You know, this guy doesn't even have the right to be making these decisions. He's not anything. He's the guy who stole software, and he just became yeah. a billionaire. Yesterday, yesterday I posted like half half. A <laughs> I posted a clip I found. I'm like, oh, Bill Gates, you're also a banking expert because he he uh, he invest well later invested into something called uh, Bcash in Bangladesh, oh. and uh, so he comments and so he he comments on on this banking uh, investment that he made and he it's like the whole I said oh the good old until we do this this won't happen. He, he does, he frames a lot of his sentences like this. Yeah. Like, until we all get vaccinated, there's yeah. no going back to the new normal. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, he, who, this guy, his, his tentacles are in media. He has funded, like I told you, I played this sick rendition of Where's Waldo? And I took Waldo and I, I, 
put Bill Gates' face. And so I just play where's what? Let's see where you are, Bill. I know you're somewhere. You're I'm over somewhere here. here. <laughs> I'm in the corner with Melinda. Oh, he's yeah. such a creep. So I also posted a picture of, I said, my two fave cartoon supervillains with Pelosi and Fauci oh. extending their hand and then behind it is a sign that says 10 years of progress and I'm like progress for who exactly who who is who is uh, benefiting from this so it's it's um it's 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 cra- it's crazy it's crazy and I I do keep thinking like am I going to go back to the states the the one resident here Many people that I was speaking to that are awake, thank God, were thinking, because a lot of them, either they've done it legitimately, and if I were to hear, I would want to do it legitimately. I I don't want to do this border run. People go to Panama, and then they come back. That Those days are over. That's not going to happen. And it's like, the, you think that coronavirus is going to go away? Did HIV go away? Did cancer go away? Did Ebola go away? No, they're going to linger. Something like this is going to linger. Maybe it'll be like Zika, which was nothing, which Fauci was instrumental in, in making people think it was something. What, we, we have to see. Um, they, they got a, they've got a vaccine for that one. Didn't need it, but they yep, got one. They, they, have a, they have a vaccine for a benign virus that was patented in 1947 by the Rockefellers. And... This this man that has is working towards citizenship here and has been here for a long time and is also seeing the destruction of the economy in Costa Rica. And okay, Costa Rica is not a big geopolitical country vis-a-vis other countries, but it's a good telltale sign that this is a pandemic because this excuse me the same crap is happening here it's like it's going to be that we were going to have a dan a gathering yesterday like a, a, a static dance with a cacao ceremony and and gathered together and they canceled it be- it's going to be like footloose we're, we're having an underground dance party <laughs> next week hey kids so no it's dancing footloose. <laughs> it's li- like straight up footloose i'm gonna go and we have to we have to abide by the curfew which this week happens to be 10 I thought today was seven, but now they rolled it back to five. I've gone twice on the beach beyond nine thirty. Um, That's the cutoff, nine thirty. Yeah, the Rona starts working at nine thirty. Right at nine thirty. It's really weird that that happens. Nine thirty one. Be careful. Sorry. I like well, to get out of there yeah. at nine twenty eight, Miriam. I want to get out there two two minutes early because if I happen to be like stepping out and it's nine, it touches nine thirty one, I may get Corona. Mm-hmm. So nine twenty eight. That's my two minute window. I, yeah, I got enough. Yeah. To grab my stuff. I'm gonna grab a put the every because you have to put your towels back inside your bag, right? And you mm-hmm. gotta grab all your stuff. Takes like a minute and a half, and then you're walking out. You want to be out of there right by nine thirty. Uh, or... I got out at ten thirty because I'm a rebel and because <laughs> I have a trespassing fetish. Well, I, do. I think you I've just can one. hustle out of there if they start. But you know, I also put a, I also put on an invisible cloak. <laughs> I do. You have an, a been, Harry Potter invisible cloak. <laughs> yes, I do. When when I was younger, I used to shoplift, and I used to do it in plain sight. I never ever hid anything anywhere. I always had it right in front of me, and I just put a magic cloak on it. Then I outed. I wrote about it, so I outed my and you know. I, I used to steal um, dirty magazines, which I, by that I mean People and, and Us Weekly. Um, now, by magic cloak, do you just mean like a jacket just like so draped over your arm? No. Like an actual magic? An energetic, like Harry Potter. I'm not putting anything anywhere. I'm holding it right in front of the person. I'm just, it's just magic. Ah, so you're doing the old Jedi mind trick. <laughs> yes. The old, no, I'm not holding that, that dirty magazine. I don't magazine. do that anymore. But I never felt bad. I have to be honest. I never felt bad stealing a People magazine. Uh, and then, you know, it was, it was just, it's the Matrix. It's looking at the Matrix. And now I don't, I don't look at the Matrix. I don't, all I do is, like, read information. I, so I made it a point. I have a waterproof iPod. And so I made it a point, because when I'm walking along the beach, I'm usually listening 
I'm listening to Richie from Boston. I'm Richie, listening to James Munder. I'm listening to X22 Report or SGT Report or Corey Diggs. I'm just constantly listening. And, you know, so that I do that in the morning. Well, I do that all through the day. And then I'm trying to write. But all I want to do is just be, be like a news commentator. I just want to know what's going on. I know. And connect the, and connect the dots. Um, so... So I took a break, and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm going to play music, um, for my soul, and I, I went and I, I swam in the ocean with my, with my waterproof iPod. It's one of the best investments. I highly recommend it. A waterproof iPod. Especially if you're afraid of the water. When I was living in Greece, Mark, I had a, a, a Jedi, um, ninja snorkel, oh, and it cool. was water, water that I that wasn't turbulent. And I could see the floor, and I would be listening to Dave Asprey and Ooh. podcasts while, or, or swimming in music like wow. Esther Williams' time. It's it's an it's amazing. That is really cool. That's yeah. really cool. Um, yeah. I won't be doing that. I'm not a I'm not a strong swimmer. <laughs> I'm not as strong. I well I I'm I'm scared of the water. I I almost drowned twice. I I actually wow. have hyperventilated. I think it's because I'm definitely an Earth sign. But I've hyperventilated snorkeling, and this was the thought that I had. I can't stand right now. And then I freaked out that I wasn't on Earth. Oh, and then yeah. I would have to, like, just, okay, breathe, Miriam, breathe. Um, yeah, I almost died once in Venezuela, and then I almost died once in, in Greece. And my, my ex was a Pisces, a little fishy, and, and he went really far out, and it was wavy, and I was wearing my waterproof iPod and my snorkel. And he's like, take the, and it was waves. And then the waves started going over the snorkel. And he's like, take off the snorkel. He called me Bambi. Take off the snorkel, Bambi. And, and I wouldn't because I needed to be like a land animal. I needed to breathe. And then I started, I started drowning. Taking in the water. I started drowning. And, and, um, what's her name? Um, who, who died, Weinstein. Um, anyway, this woman, this woman was playing. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to, I'm going to drown to, to what's her face. And I made oh, it back were, to shore. You were listening to something. You were like, I'm not dying to this. She was, de she's <laughs> dead. She's a dead singer. She, oh, that's she, hilarious though. I forget. I, I forget. She has a gorgeous voice. That and was the motivation. Like, there's no way I'm going to die to, to. That is so funny. You know, I've always had this thing where I could either sw swim with my arms or my feet, but not both at the same time. <laughs> I don't know why. Why? You're I, coordinated. I've I don't seen know. you dance. I have no idea. It's just weird. It feels right. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, the feet feel right, but not together. It just feels weird. I'm like, I'll just do one or the other. But, uh, and I just think it's because I taught myself to swim, I think, when I was a kid. That's what I just remember jumping in a pool when I was like seven and being like, ooh, I'm doggy paddling. Look at me. And that's how I learned how to swim. So is, how do your kids swim? They have swimming lessons. <laughs> they swim amazing. Swimming lessons. They, they swim I do amazing. the frog stroke is my stroke. A frog stroke. Yeah. I do the uh, sitting on the boat with a guitar and a beat seat oh, playing music nice. stroke. So uh, nice. No, but I'm, and that's my fear is to be in the middle of the water somewhere, like an ocean and like, and just not yeah, either have to jump in the water to swim somewhere or like all of a sudden I'm in the water and I have to swim somewhere, you know, like those two things. Phew, I don't know how That's to dive. Fear. You don't know how to dive? <laughs> I don't know how to dive. I went with, uh, Zach took me to this beautiful water pool, and it had like an, uh, here, a like natural a... like slide. Oh, wow. And he's like, dive into the water. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how to dive. But I jumped. I, I, I was like, jumping's fun. I went down, I went down the, the, the slide. It was amazing. We were the only ones. We're naked. There's no humans around. That's like one of the, one of the benefits. Mm. And then, and then uh, the owner of the property came and 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 I was like, was he spying on us the whole time? He was a little bit, a little, little creepy, creepy sitting there a with little, the binoculars. He was a little creepy. Yeah. 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 He could have. He you, he he admitted that he doesn't see humans much. Oh, jeez. Um, you may have to use that magic cloak and buy some of those dirty <laughs> magazines and make sure there's no photos of you guys in there. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but that's, I think that, uh, the, the beautiful thing about, um, 
if you can get away from everything right now, especially like you, that exhilarating feeling of jumping off a rock or something like that into a cold water and the feeling of jumping out of it and all the, all these things are like bring you right smack dab into the moment. It's just like nice. It's really cool. Yeah. And it's a memory. And I think that what we're doing here and you, you're creating, you're going through so much content on a daily basis to create memories. But uh, for me, I'm always saying you have to like create strong moments. Just got to continue for yourself. Like people are creating all these strong moments and you're reporting on them. And then the thing is every once in a while, you got to jump off a freaking rock people and you got to yeah. feel something and you got to feel for yourself and not just for through someone else's eyes, but through your own eyes, feel something. And well, love is a verb it. also. It's like, you know, to just say I love you to someone and but to not to show it or express it. And I also posted, I tweeted how we're very much, many of us are, are disembodied and we're not really in our body, especially now. Like my, my friends, a couple of my friends were saying like, Miriam, you're coming off as, as a little bit defensive or in fight or flight. Now, I, you know, I'm processing... A little bit of heart heartache but but also we're digesting a lot of negativity and we are arguably being micro traumatized every single day all day arguably and so you have to transmutate that so I've just been aware of like oh like I did an interview a couple of days ago on um, Nate Stolzman's show and I, I was watching the show and, and my tone was like very, it was, I was a little aggro. And, um, so I was like, okay, well, I don't want, I don't want to be, I don't want to be aggro, but it's very justifiable to be angry in this, in these times. And that's why we have, uh, you know, this, this outrage culture, you know, that we're stoking all the time on both sides. The, the, the demon rats are outraged because they're losing and desperate. And then the other, we're watching this train wreck happening in real time. Our, yeah, yeah, and our and civil liberties being taken away. So I just stolen away. Yeah, and might I point out also that as an empath, you're feeling a lot of that, and you're just kind of reflecting it, and that's a difficult thing. I wanted to also say something. I have a theory. I have a theory that the reason why Donald Trump is so effective, and I know that he's also extremely polarizing, but he's extremely effective. You said something that I thought was interesting, that he actually is very warm when it comes to certain people. He's very, very strong when it comes to others. He's, he's forceful. With, you know, he's got a different way with, that, with everybody, but I, I know what it is. I think Donald Trump is an empath. And that's the reason why he really? did a lot of deals. Yeah, because think about this for a second. He's able to gauge in a split second if the person who is asking him a question or who is, is engaging him is a positive feeling if somebody who's, who's, who's a friend, a foe, all in a split second. And he snaps back with either a smile and something warm or he hits you in the face. And that's the thing I see about him is he is very warm to some people, but it's all how they start the conversation. If they have a smile and or something or they have a warm question for him, I don't know if it's an empath thing, but he definitely – it's the, definitely the way he, that people approach him. He is sensing from the beginning whether, whether they're a friend or a foe. So maybe it's not empath, but he is able to sense whether or not they're a friend or a foe within the first couple seconds. And that is exactly why he, he, he treats people the way he does. What do you think? I, I, okay, that's interesting because I think he's narcissistic. And, but then you brought up last week the fact of like, I think, you, you know, if I got one hate comment, he's being hated upon all, all the time. They really hate him. Um, I don't know if it's empath, but, but to that point, he was being interviewed by a first time. Someone, it was his, this guy. I don't know how he landed the interview. And he called, he told trump that ali g was he was there with a group of other people and he was going to interview ali um, ali g was going to interview we're talking sasha baron cohen yeah. was going to interview trump. president trump and president trump right away was like there's something up with this guy and left and the other the other whoever was being interviewed stayed there for six hours and so this reporter or this man who was who was um I retweeted that too, who interviewed him, 
called that out and and president trump said you're the you're you're the only person that's ever brought ever noticed that but it's to your point that there was something on his radar that sussed sasha out and was like this guy's a this guy's a fake and and left and and it's more like he's he's I've seen some gentleness. He's like, like, have you seen him a couple of times? He's like, why don't you come and speak? And the way the way he says it, it's a very gentle. Yeah, he has a warmth to him. That's why he's not evil, like everyone says. It's just the way they they really do a great job portraying him. And they sure do. And he he obviously, you know, I really do pray because he has to to these big pharma people, these global elitists. Um, Big pharma. I'm like, why is he giving two billion dollars to Pfizer? Wow, it's really good bright. question. These are Swannies, by the way. What are they? No, they're not Swannies. They're a different kind. Are those blue blockers? The blue blockers. The blue blockers. They block. Look, she's got the blue blockers on over there. They look good on everyone. Of no, they. But, those, but, those but, but you notice if you wear these for 20 minutes and you take them out in the night, and the reason why I stopped wearing these particulars is because my eye. It's all. It's still blurry. It's not strong enough. You realize how much light you are letting into your eyeballs. Yeah, I'm thinking about right now. I should switch mine. I have, like, you at, have blue blockers. I know at a certain time at night it switches over, but I shut it off because it like changes the whole look of the show. But you know what? You're right. Like I'm killing my eyes here. I get this massive screen right in front of me. That's what I, I'm like watching you on here. And hold on, let me let, tell me if that changes anything, right? Is any questions? Did that change any anything? Questions. Did that change any of the look? Let's see. I'm actually going to look real well, quick on my screen and see. I'm changing well, it the over. Thing, the thing is that I'm looking into the camera, and I have a light right next to me, so it's blinding. Oh <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see. I'm just waiting to see. I have YouTube open over here, so Instagram can watch. I'm going to quickly see if it went down. Oh. Although you can see blue, right, in my in my. Yeah, it just got darker essentially, but that's fine. I think it look all right still. It's just darker. Um, I took I took some notes on things that have happened this week that I wanted. I looked before I came on. I was looking at six feet under. I was curious. Oh, you had said something, yeah. I was curious, like, why are they telling us to social distance six feet? What's the deal with that? I don't know if it has to do with the velocity of how far. Well, I used to think it was six feet until someone recently said 27. And I'm like, well, look, if you're going to tell what? people to stand 27 feet apart. They said they actually did a study. And it, if you look at the, the, so the potential of a sneeze or a cough, it could go as far as. 50 miles as, an hour. Yeah, 50 and, miles an hour. Really? And as far as 27 feet is what I'd heard now. I don't know if that means the virus can go that far, but I do know. Now, here's the other thing I have to say. If you're out in a car by yourself, or you're out in the car with your family, out in the car with your wife, and you're driving with a mask on, you're an idiot. I'm just saying. You you're should not do that. You're a COVID idiot. Yeah, a COVID idiot, for sure. Uh, because it's not going to... You're not protecting yourself. What you're doing is making yourself sicker. Plus, you may pass out in the freaking car, so stop it. And someone did, right? Yeah, and someone crashed and killed themselves or something. Maybe they just crashed, but something happened, and it wasn't... Uh, <laughs> it wasn't good. It wasn't because they just, like, ran into it. It's because the mask was causing them to lose consciousness, bottom line. Uh, but you know what? Look, we. I want to hear what other things you had some notes you said, some things yes, you want to chat yes, about. Huh? Had some notes. So I looked at, so the six feet under, I was just curious, where did six feet under come from? So in 1665, the Black Plague um, in London. And so there, it's like the jury's out, but some said that that's deep enough so that an animal can dig up. Another, uh, another theory is that six feet is what protects you from the plague of illness, whatever. Um, so, yeah, the Black Death. Black Death of um, 1665. So we covered the multiple vaccines, and maybe that's because then the people will be, like I, I tweeted sarcastically, oh, Bill, oh, Dr. Gates, please just give us one. You know, like if they're saying the antibodies wear off. So arguably, no vaccine. This is this is ludicrous. You know about the bioterrorism um exercise dark winter that went really bad with with uh, smallpox that no. dr dr gates talks about yeah in 2000 and 
Is it 2011? There's an exercise, a simulation exercise called Dark Winter. And I say that because they are the faux CDC whistleblower and the European WHO chief have both talked about Dark Winter. So we are, this is only, guys, it's going to only get, guys, that's not, Twitter engineering has said guys is not socially acceptable anymore. That's racist. That. That's racist. It's, it's <laughs> xenophobic. You should have said he, she, we, C, D, L, M, N, O, P. And I want to say okay. Get a, it's going to get a lot worse. Tomorrow. I know. It is. So because when, when influenza and, and corona collide, coming this October, November, and they get their hard-ons, that, you know, it, it's going to, who knows? It's, it's going to be a dark winter, just like in Game of Thrones. It's a, it's, they talk about the dark winter. It's going to be Covinzuenza. How do you say it? Covinzuenza. <laughs> Covinzuenza. Covinzuenza. That's a lot to say right there. You could say that three times. I dare you. Covinzuenza. Covinzuenza. <laughs> so this week, uh, Hannity and Tucker, Tucker Carlson who I never thought I would, has done probably the best news reports for the mainstream media. I'm trying to get Ryan on his show. I think Ryan should be on his, Ryan should be on his show. You know? Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely. Zach should be on the, yeah, Zach and Ryan should both be on that show. Because just to discuss, because here's the thing, we discussed this last week. If you have a problem with China and Russia affecting our last election and you spend three years wasting our taxpayer dollars impeaching a president for fake news, you should have a problem with Mark Zuckerberg. You should have a problem with Google. You should have a problem with everybody out there trying to affect this current election and doing it. Uh, I mean, it's a hypocrisy at the highest levels. It is. Yeah, I was just thinking of, um, I watched again the project, the Project Veritas interview with Ryan and how it's okay to desecrate Jesus Christ and have him in compromising. And <clears throat> when he posted a link on anti-Muslim protest that they got, they, he got in trouble. And then they backtracked on why he was getting in trouble because it, it, it wasn't appropriate to use the personal site to publish something. It wasn't the content. Because it, in the photo, the LA Times, he's, he's protesting. He's, he's in the LA Times photo. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know, I'm, um, I didn't see that, but I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with an issue. So oh, I I'm told sorry. you. While no. you deal with an issue, I'm going to open the... Well, you know what? Here, so let me do something real quick because my dog is going nuts, the new baby dog. Let me go quickly and uh, I'm going to go quickly and see if I can get the dog because he's my wife is, is needs to take a break. Should I sing for people? No. Yeah, if you want to do that or what I'm going to do is put a, if you want me to put something on and you take a, go grab a drink and I'll put a face swap on sure. or something. Um, sure. Guys, I'm going to play you something that I think is pretty funny here. This is episode 12 because we played you 13 already. Episode 12 of the Donald Trump show. While I quickly run and get this puppy, then we then we can maybe look at some of the comments. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. I'm gonna put this on. I'll be right back. Hopefully, oh, with a puppy. Go look at Max. Uh, Make yeah, sure Max. I'll go get okay. the little pup, and I'll be right back. Here we go. Harold and Jameson live from the studio. Donald Trump joins us with episode 12 of the Trump Show. Thank you, and welcome to episode 12 of the Donald Trump Show. Tonight we're talking about sleep sofa bumbling Biden. This episode's called How Far Left Can Sleep Sofa Go? Let's take a look. And I can't thank you enough for all you've done so far and that's for, uh, for t thank you for taking the time for watching today. You're off to a great start, Joe. Look, one of the things I think is important, I wish, I wish we taught more in our schools about the Islamic faith. Wait, hold on. So you get rid of God in the school. You can't pray in school, but you want to talk about Islam? Does that make any sense? It doesn't at all, unless you're trying to pander for votes. Oh, look, it's pandering Biden. And what people don't realize is one of my avocation is theology. Don't realize is that we, we all come from the same root here in terms of our fundamental basic beliefs. The same fundamental beliefs. Are you, are you crazy, Joe? 
Crazy Joe Biden. Yeah, that's right. We all fundamentally believe the same things. That's right. So my generic point is... Everything about Sleep Sofa Joe's generic. Can we agree that we can redirect some of the funding? Yes, uh, absolutely. Okay, so no more police departments. Sleep Sofa Joe, defunding the police. Look, let's divert some funds. Let's not improve the police. Let's just defund them. Let's go back to cowboys and Indians. How about we go back to the Wild West? Sounds like a good idea, Sleep Sofa. Did you think about this one at all? Or are you just reading off of the teleprompter again? And one of the things that we also need to be doing is fundamentally changing the way, and I've been pushing it for years, changing the way we deal with our prisoners system. Okay, this one's classic. Are you guys ready for this? It should be a rehabilitation system, not a punishment system. Okay, I think it's time we slam bumbling Biden back onto his sleep sofa. I started looking at it and found out that this midnight basketball isn't getting them together a bunch of jive folks who are black, white, and Hispanic who live in inner city to do, uh, you know, try to see if they can be Michael Jordan. Because I really can't tell anymore, was that racist? They were keeping schools open, so gangs come off streets instead of out raping my mother, marauding me. You know, this is the third or fourth time I've heard Joe speak about his mother in a very weird way. I'm not really sure if he has a thing for Ma, good old Ma. My daughter will be safer. My wife will be safer. My mother will be safer. See, there it is again. And I will be safer. And I will be happy. It just looks like Joe Biden did things to suit his own needs when he had young kids. Now he's an old man, doesn't even know his name. So he's like, yeah, you know what? Let's talk about Islam in school. And uh, I think I pooped my pants. And the truth is, we don't very well know how to rehabilitate them at that point. That's the sad truth. Could I call Liar Liar Pants on Fire? Because Leaps Over Joe said it should be a rehabilitation. And he just said there's no way to rehabilitate. Bobby Rush, member of Congress, said the other day, I'm ashamed that I voted for the 94 crime bill. You ashamed of that bill? Not at all. Um, and in fact, I drafted the bill. Proud of putting people in prison. Inner city, all different colors and greeds. And now you want them all to vote for you. You're the one who put them in, Warden. How are you going to answer for that, Warden Biden? Warden Biden, that's a mouthful, really. Imagine bumbling Biden as a warden. <laughs> all right, I think that's enough for episode 12. Look forward to tomorrow, lucky number 13. It's going to be a big episode. Not sure what yet. It's the Trump Show. See you tomorrow. All right, I'm back. And well, how, how did it go? Well, he seems to be okay. I got the little monitor here, though, the old baby monitor. Yeah, we've, that's we, what I was saying. You have a baby monitor. <laughs> well, we've been using this since our little baby's been born. Now she's just turned five. And I said, I think that we can put this on the pup. And take it away from the monk -a bunk So that's where we're at right now. Um, so hopefully if I hear him jump up, I can't wait to get, grab him and bring him down to show him to you guys. Yeah. But right now he's sleeping on the floor. I don't want to bother him. Um, but, you know, he's a baby. I'm like, he, my poor wife, she's like, he has not stopped sleeping. He has not slept yet. He's just been. Oh, oh let me see what you sent over. You sent me a couple of so things. So I sent, a, I sent the uh, Bill Gates B cash bit and then I sent, I, I did a story on um, the gag order was lifted for George Floyd the, oh, yeah. over the case. So I sent that. It was published on, it was published on a site called Patriot Soapbox. And it's run by a couple called Radix and Pamphlet. And Radix published my story. And then oh, wow. I went to, sorry? I said, wow, that's amazing. And she, she, she went to she tweeted my story. I went to retweet her, and in front of my eyes, she got deleted. Wow, and, are you, you know, serious? 7,000 accounts got expunged off of Twitter. And it, it, about QAnon. And the thing is this. The, the, they shot themselves in the foot. They, they, 
the on Google Trends, the search people who had never heard of QAnon are now like, who's what, what's QAnon? So they've only shot themselves in the foot. So it, that doesn't make any sense to me. They are shooting themselves in the foot. To me, they're digging their grave. They're exposing themselves. The the amount of corruption. So many people disappeared, and I was again in Twitter. Twitter jail where like today someone sent this is like on a regular basis I constantly have to follow you again uh, Dr. Robert Epstein that I interviewed that that has done work investigating Google he was the editor-in-chief of psychology magazine which was the only magazine I had a subscription to as an adult was un unfollowed me so I wrote him an email and I said you know doctor if you if you want to unfollow me, I totally respect that. And he's like, no. And then he tweeted, he followed me again. So they're unfollowing my followers. And then they throttle. I'm not allowed to save my data. I'm trying to save my data in case I get axed. All my amazing tweets. That's why I use Thread app Unroll. Because I'm creating PDFs so that I have a backup of my tweets. It's a good idea. Yeah, if they're threads. And I do a lot of threads. Um, because I'm basically reporting, doing, so I've, now I'm going to start doing my threads on Patriot Soapbox. So today I reposted my lawsuit uh, today, this week on Imelda Marcos, a Fauci filing a lawsuit against Imelda Marcos for Doris Duke, who's dead and who told Imelda, you don't have to pay me back $5 million because Imelda Marcos got put into jail for racketeering. And Doris Duke of Big Tobacco was friends with Imel DeMarcos, Imel DeMarcos being a dictator of Philippines who millions and millions and millions have gone unrecovered. And we know that she had a, she's like the shoe lady. Um, so I reposted that and there was actually a term called Imeldific. And so I posted that and I'll be publishing it on Patriot Soapbox because I'm working for free so I might as well try to get it exposed because they keep on censoring me. It's yeah. really really sad and frustrating but I refuse to shut up. Well I think that that's the only way that you get heard. The only way you'll be heard is if you continue to drive. And and then, so I'm grateful for anyone who listens, anyone who realizes I put fresh stuff out. If it's one person, if it's 10 people, it's 40 people, I am super grateful. And it's just like a honeybee. Like I go and forage by myself, but I can't live without a hive for more than 24 hours. We need to support one another. That's a wonderful way of saying it. It's so true. Um, my son the other day was talking about somehow he gets on YouTube. He's looking at Roblox. You know this Roblox thing? It's a stupid game. It's been around, I guess, for about 12 years, but 14 years. But it's gotten big, and the kids all play it. And it's like this – it reminds me of 8-bit graphics when we were kids. Anyway, the kids love playing it. He's like, oh, this guy's got 6.4 million subscribers. And I'm like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, this guy's got 4.2 million subscribers. I'm like, holy cow. He's like, yeah, but you know what? They're not doing anything original. They're talking about somebody else's original idea and a lot of people are tuning in to hear about it. He's like, but you create new content every single day. You make new new face swaps and then you go live every day. It's all brand new content every day. He goes, that's cool. He goes, one day that'll be bigger than that ever could be because it's new and it's real where that's just not creative at all. It's just talking about somebody else's creativity, which is weird. You know, that more well, people yeah, are interested in that. Back it goes back to like just because you don't have a I have like four thousand depending on the week <laughs> four, right four thousand two hundred I don't know seventy followers on on YouTube and why why are only twenty people watching when I put something out that what are the number why are people being bedazzled by numbers whether yeah, it's the so COVID nineteen task force death numbers that they're parading at will up, down, constantly. Like, I don't even look at them. It doesn't mean anything to me. I know what this is, and I'm going to bank on my immune system that none of these experts have ever mentioned. That's and it. it's the same thing with followers. Oh, because you're not censored? Like, I never, I'm not able to monetize anything on, on YouTube. 
And I don't care. Like, why can't you? You're over a thousand followers. Isn't that? I thought you can monetize when you get over. I can. I'm ineligible. My it's the content. It's the content of my stuff. It's me. I'm, huh. I'm so what does it mean? I'm not an again. We've talked about this last week. I'm not an influencer. Um, they have some weird thing. Like I know uh, I've looked in the back end. Like you have to hit a thousand subscribers and 40,000, some crazy thing or 4,000 hours of viewers, some ridiculous amount. It, but it, I did the math. Like if I look at each month, like if I continue for this next year and just with the people that actually tune in, sometimes we get between four and nine people, 12 people, whatever it is on a good day. And usually it's more like four, but still when you get to whatever number it is and you do the math on it, it should be close to the figure of being able to maybe monetize by the end of a year or two. I just don't know how you get um, subscribers and I don't really care. I say this to everybody. I'm just here to ha to come out every day, provide well, some light. You have to promote. You have to ask people, please subscribe, please share. And I don't. I'm not. I'm not good at that either. Yeah, Most of the channels have um, have sponsors. I'm sure I can get a sponsor if I wanted to, but I don't have the bandwidth. Um, I'm just trying to put Why my Patreon. This, this is ridiculous. Hmm? I can't believe this is on here. Hold on a second. What? Hold on one second. I can't believe that this was been sitting oh, here the whole time. Ryan? The yeah, did you see Ryan? this? This is ridiculous. I just saw it now. <laughs> I hope that was that there the whole time. It, it must have be, been. Okay. Hold on a second. But I I brought a spe specific one in for you. Here we are. Come on. Are you serious? How come that wasn't there the entire time, people? You know why? Cuz Ryan was on last night. I forgot about switching yeah, it over. It's but right. I made the f backdrop. Check it out now if you can look on the screen. It may Maybe it switched over by then. Is it there yet? Not yet. There we go. So the fourth descent, people. The fourth descent. So let's descend... So Let's descend down. What else do you they, have? They tried to smear Hannity and Tucker. And I saw. Lawsuits. You know what? I didn't. They, I didn't look at it. What's what happened? Tell me what's the story is there. Well, in a nutshell, sexual allegations. Um, and it's like I don't. I don't know about Hannity, but I don't like the New York Times published his home address. You know, trying to dox him. Wait, which one, Hannity or no? No Tucker. Tucker's home address. Tucker, yeah, New York Times. And if they, if if the if the right did that, it would, it would be, be un unacceptable. Yeah. To, to do that, he had he has already moved once because of death threats. Yeah, it's uh, the 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 it doesn't make sense. You can't criticize when you happen to support. The president of the United States of America. It's not like you support. Uh, the KKK, you support these people think that means the same thing but if you look at what's going on you just had a man who you hate sign a executive order which makes insulin penny, pennies on the, on the day and that is important to people in inner cities that is important to people with, at, with low income that can't afford insulin costs and you still hate the guy and it's unbelievable that no one's reporting that did you see it anywhere? I happened to see it in a couple of my friends who happen to be I conservative. Saw I saw I saw it because I watched I watched the president. president. I watched him sign the you executive watched him order. Sign it. See, you're <laughs> someone who does your research. You know, and you know what I and uh, you know what I thought you saw he has a bin of all these pens and he shot the pen out. I'm like, "Oh my god, someone might get corona because <laughs> the, my corona might be on the pen." Why why are we giving out the pens? Why are some of the people behind President Trump masked and some of them azar was there he was masked this yeah. is all like so sloppy yeah, no, no consistency weird. no no logic it doesn't matter because the people are eating it up details don't matter people don't look at it we're living in an age of mediocrity it, so well how yeah, can you I, justify I, in dc for example they say it's a mandatory thing you wear a mask now except if you are in government oh really yeah that's another new thing. Like, it's mandatory for everybody, but if you're in the government... Yeah, because if you're in the government, you're not going to get the coronavirus. You've got an extra body of protection on you. It's called the government. It's a bunch of crap. And it's that's what makes me think. Like, if it's so scary to everybody, why would they want to risk it? 
Yeah. Rand Paul got it. Isn't he still around? Jack right. Nicholas got it. He and his wife, 80 years old. 9.7 recovery rate. Unless you are an older person, the median age is what, 60-ish? Yes, just like the flu can be fatal, just like respiratory illnesses are the fifth leading cause of death. See, we have, here's the thing is because there is no accurate data, there's no way to tell how many people that were between 20 and 30 that died from it, from it, 30 to 40 that died from it. It. You know what I mean? And to see, well, was it maybe that we lost 140,000 lives, but 90,000 of them were from nursing homes because Cuomo decided to put the people into the nursing homes. And that's exactly what happened. So people are dying again. It's by COVID nineteen death by default. The old, the old default routine. You're the right. Def- exactly. I I posted today again how, why is it that the largest populace of people that were infected were the military, <laughs> and the Pentagon ordered for them to stop reporting, and then someone responded, which I have to make a note to find that they recanted and said that those 60,000 or whatever blah blah amount were f- weren't really infected. They weren't really and, infected. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, I I know I have the article the Pentagon asking um so they recanted. I have to look look that up. You as know what? far as yeah. I'm just curious like we're so fixated on the BS, the media machine BS here in the U S but what about if we took a, just a telescope and we just focused in, maybe that's not the right thing, but we take a satellite and focus in on one of the other European countries and how they're handling it and the type of stuff they're saying, because my question would be this. We thought at the beginning, this was a three, five, seven, nine, 14% death rate. Like they were throwing crazy numbers out there. And now we learn that it's 0.3, you said 0.2 to 0.3. And even if it was factual, it's 0.2 to 0.3, because they're going to say that, no, well, that was based on blah, 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 blah. That's 0.2 to 0.3. And they're calling 90, maybe 40% of them COVID cases that aren't. Right. So then it's just, that's why I just don't look at the numbers. I just know this is no less fatal than the flu. There might be different strains. If you have comorbidities, you shouldn't be eating pizza. Sorry, you shouldn't be eating donuts on a regular basis. You should stay away from sugar. You should look at other antioxidants. You should look at all the things you should have always looked at because we're a sick society. End of story. Can we move on and live our life? But yeah. no, but no, but no, but no. And now we're, we're canceling the RNC. So also, also, I'm jumping, there was the person, I think her name was Esther Salas, the judge, Hispanic judge, who was appointed oh. to look into the uh, Deutsch. Um, Epstein? And, yeah. Is that the one? And, and um, a faux FedEx officer showed up at the door, shot the son. Um, the husband got got uh, murdered as well isn't it interesting that the guy was all of a sudden they found some writings from him back in the day that i was like okay so they found a guy and they're like okay let's so murder then didn't this he dude die too what wasn't he found dead the they suspect? found him dead yeah they found him dead with like and they're like oh well we yeah he was a guy who hated women <laughs> like what just happened to be it's he comes like, with it's a bunch of crap there's a word in arabic and it's called a haga and a haga means it sounds like Baba Yaga. Ayahaga means like anything goes. Like in French, it's n'importe quoi. Whatever. It's whatever. It's whatever. Whatever. Um, whatever they want. Um, it doesn't matter because people have lost their brain cells and it's clear they're laughing at us. Like I have a, a meme that it's like if, if people, if we told you tomorrow that you have to crawl in order to avoid the Rona, you have to be crawling close to the ground on all fours. How many people would do it? Yeah. No, and then it's true. like and then you're like, listen, if this is if this is so be it. You have this is your karma. This this is gonna be this is a culling and if you're gonna fall for it, hopefully the global elitists will be satisfied with the you know, thousands who willingly go and give their arm to be injected. Is that enough of a sacrifice? Will they be satisfied with that? 
That's completely insane too. And and when I'm starting to see a lot of the stuff you've been sharing with me, you know, like when I look at some of these doctors who talk about this never ending gene line that they they insert into your children, into you when you're taking these vaccines, even I believe when you take the regular flu vaccine, this is in there. And that is it in there or is it just when you do like a measles, mumps and rubella? I'm not sure well, where what this is. There's so many. There's adjuvants, there's there's uh, live uh, viruses um what what are we talking about that's in so there? i don't know who the doctor was but she said that basically within these vi- vaccines there is a specific never-ending lo- gene line basically like it's mm. and basically that means cancer is what she said oh she yeah goes, it, it go it fails to go through apoptosis so it becomes cancerous uh, cell. it's it's an immortalized cell immortalized cell i'm sorry it's, that was what it was yeah, yeah. And so, therefore, it, it is. It's basically injecting with with cancer. You're and injecting you can, cancer. You can argue that a lot of things pronounce themselves many years later. And there is a clip of Bill Gates, like doing one of his demonic laughs, where he, it's like, how can you know? We'll only see the effects later on, and then it's it's too late. And um, yeah, it, that's what's going to happen here too. The concoction of things, whether it's it's using aborted fetal cell, whether it's it's using um, mouse cells, whatever. It's all po- It's like just think of a brew. Just think of sorcerers, so, um, and they're just putting a brew yeah. together of poison. Put a little bit of aluminum. We'll put a little formaldehyde. A little bit of fetal tissue. A little bit of chicken DNA. Yeah. We're gonna mix it all together. Ha ha ha. And then we're gonna inject it in you. No, yeah. thank you. I will pass. And I I'll think you, the other thing too is you're right. If you if your immune system is able to handle this, then you're gonna be able to handle it. And if it can't, then look. What's meant to be is meant to be. I don't want to get this thing, whatever it is. I do think, like, when you look at it, it has a similar mortality rate to the flu. Um, but I, I know that it's more dangerous than the flu if you'd get it because it could affect people randomly in different ways. So I don't want it. I don't want anybody I know to, to, to get it. But I don't think it's um, – I know a few things, like, we're not talking about, like, this freaking President G hole. He's the one who were to blame for all this garbage. Well, and the, okay, well, when you say that, when we say that, because there was to, this week, Secretary Pompeo gave a, a long talk about banding together, and there, you know, there's ramping towards just taking back power from China, right? And there's the closing of the consulates in Houston, in San Francisco, yep. and then. China closed their American embassy, right? Somewhere in China, they closed the American embassy. So there's escalations around this, our China-America relationship. But to blame it, like, and call it the China virus, I, I don't believe that because I think the global elitists are behind it. And I think, I think Charles Lieber is, behind, is involved somehow. I think for Diedrich, is involved. I think the BSL-4 in North Carolina, the Winnipeg um, BSL-4 lab, China is involved. But to say it's the China virus because they didn't tell us in time, well, that's all subjective because President, comparatively, President Trump closed the borders early on and and he's the one who closed the borders but zach and i were telling people to close telling him to close the borders in february because we were uh in the future so it's all it's all it's all relative and it's all blame should why did i agree to take back our it's an interesting right we're trying to take back our power from our reliance even from pharmaceuticals what 90 percent are made in China. china They could poison us all if they wanted. Everything made in China. They could poison Um, everybody if they wanted to. Just take over. Look, their goal is to take over anyway. Here's the thing I have. Well, arguably they have taken over. They're here in Costa Rica. They own a lot. They're everywhere. It's everywhere. Um, I heard, and I don't know if this is true. This may be a piece of fake news, but something someone said that Obama signed, signed something before he left office, which basically it was a loan to the Chinese government and saying if we default in that loan that they can take our land. 
and oh, it's a specific yeah. land deal or something where if we default they could take our land and basically you know if we go into ban- if we bankrupt ourselves with the, with this coronavirus they could just come in and s- take our land take our homes take whatever they want and call it you know uh, whatever that word is um i forget what the name of the word is I'm starting to lose it it's been 11 hours in a car today yeah you, you've been <laughs> driving a, a, a lot well we can play we can play the bill gates clip oh yeah is that did you have that here you sent that to me? Let me put that in. I see the little puppy moved upstairs. He's he's sleeping, though, right now. I'm hoping that he wakes up so I can share him with you guys. Let's see. Um, Do we have any questions? I hear him moving a little. A little cutie. All right, let's see what we got here. So this is the George Floyd thing. The other thing was the gag order. Which one do you want me to play? Well, the gag, the gag order, I could just, you could go through it. Um, oh, wait, maybe this was what you I'll sent me here. Oh wait! So you sent me something already. Hold on! You already sent it to me. It's in here. Here we but go. But I, I can I can tell you what if you're if you're showing the the headline for the George Floyd gag order. Oh, that's so weird. so there was a there was a gag order that seemed to be one sided. Are you, what, I don't know what you're showing. I think you gave me. What is this? I'm gonna go back and find whatever the heck. Hold on, let me put a new piece in here, whatever that is. You gave me a few things. I'm going to go in order here. You gave me the first one. Let me go to the second one here. I think this is the one you're talking about. Um, I think this one right here is the one you're talking about right now. All right, let's see. Let me pop this in and tell me if this is the one. Are you playing the Bill Gates? I think this is the Bill Gates one. But it's okay. it's it's saying. Let me just see if I can interact with this thing. It's asking me if I want to leave Facebook. Yeah, I want to freaking leave Facebook, dude. I'm trying to go to. There we go. Is this it? Be cash investor. Banking this cheap can change lives in a country this poor. Well, banking is is banking. more fundamental than I realized. And there have been attempts, microfinance groups, uh, cooperatives, but the transaction fees were always too high. Until we get those services down with very low fees onto the the cell phone in digital mode, uh, then banking will only be for those who are better off. That's why the Gates Foundation is a Bcash investor. Banking this cheap can change lives in a country this poor. Well, banking is, is more fundamental than I realized. And there have been attempts, microfinance groups, uh, cooperatives, but the transaction fees were always too high. Until we get those Is services down with very... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's I repeating. It so twice. basically, it's the same thing. Until we do this, we do this. Yeah, you he's know, always... Until, like, who are you? Yeah, look, what? until we Take have... Take your every... man sweater and get the hell off this planet. <laughs> I know, right? Look, we're very excited Man's about our letters. RNA vaccines. We have it ready for the public. And if we inoculate everybody by August, we'll win the election. Dr. Evil. Wait, he's turning into Dr. Evil all of a sudden. Do you see that? Oh, my goodness. Let's see. Sig is on. Let's see what he says. Um, it's a New Yorker empath, Mark. It's just the New Yorker. and You feel out the person in a heartbeat. That's true. I have it, and I can feel what another is in about a second. It's interesting Sig says that, because I always felt like that was a psychic thing that I was, like I used to joke with friends in college, but I could tell you everything about someone within like three minutes of meeting them, and it was only because I could feel who they were right away. I understood who they were, what kind of person, their vibe, the, you know, if they were a good person, if they were not going to be a friend, that type, same type of thing we're just talking about. Can I give an example of that? It's yeah. A, it's a little, it's like a little bit of gossip in the, in the jungle, so I won't I won't name any names, but there there's someone here. I've stayed at their home, and they're a mystic, and they have a church, and they give plant medicine, and they're in Aries. So I'm saying Aries. I'm it's general, but they're they're b- bombastic. They're they're in your face, and and they make passes at, at this person makes passes at women. There's nothing. There's nothing. It's being a man. It's a dynamic. Anyway. There is a, a woman, they, they started a, on Facebook completely slandering him and saying that he's a sexual predator. Now, this man is, is not saying, he's, they want to have a council, a sacred council. And there's been nothing sacred in the way that they've handled themselves. So I was watching on this Telegram post, and I just, you know, I, I 
think I see myself as a fair person that can see both sides and, and can mediate. And I just said, I want to just step in and say, I've stayed at this person's house. He's never been indecent. I've done ceremony with him one on one, never been indecent. And what's the goal here? Is the goal for healing? This and this person who's heading this smear campaign um, is supposedly a sacred person. She's a millennial that's just come to the country and is is slandering this person. So what my what was my point? My point was like to to be able to feel some to feel someone. So when I scanned this woman, what came to me was like she wants his business. So mm. I bumped into the to my friend and he's my friend but i know that he some indecent things may have happened and i said i just want to tell you what i downloaded was that she wants your business and then i found out that she had gone to his place of business and she was asking him where he gets his medicines and it, i was right so i i just completely Felt her. You could sense it's it. It's just like there's there's so many faux people. If you don't have self awareness, like let's say me saying I came across on my on my interview as aggro, I could see, I could be here and look at myself and take ownership of my shit. Um, we we need more of we need more of this. Yeah, and we need to to and to develop. Our, it's a muscle. The intuition. You oh, happen yeah. to have an, a, a natural inclination to use that sense but everyone has it right yeah and it's it's being underutilized just like i i posted we were talking i was saying that everyone were in our heads and we're disembodied the resonance of the heart outweighs the resonance of of the 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 the, the of heart, the mind yeah the heart um intelligence but we do not put credence so i was saying is that why they want us to social distance that's why they want to cover our faces so that we can't read each other's cues. And it is ushering this bot um, when we're already arguably by the way that people are behaving already bots. People are bots. It's Westworld. Have you seen Westworld? I saw the first season of Westworld. It was great. It's Westworld. We're awakened in the simulation and the other bots are, are not are not realizing it and they're just going along. And this is the great awakening. Like I, I was doing, a, I was showing my interview with Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. And I, I, there was a live human being that said like that she awoke during this coronavirus. Meaning when I say a live one, like I, we talk about the great awakening, but here was this woman saying that this event has caused her to wake up. To open wow. her eyes to the truth. Yeah. And there's many more. Please come forward and say that you have woken up. You have seen that this is um, there's something there's something going on, and and so I started working with this man David Sorensen, who is building um, clips and a, and and a website to help establish that this is a pandemic. So during the week, I just was sending him. You know, all the predictive programming, like, oh, look at this dead zone from 2003. Look at this 2015 episode of, of Last Man Standing. Look at Contagion. Look at Fauci in 2017 talking about new a new coronavirus from China. So slowly, you know, you want the proof. Look at Lockstep. Look at the Rockefeller Foundation. Here's the document. Have a read. Tell us, tell us what you think after you read this. Oh, yes. Look at Event 201. Event two hundred one is that also connected to twenty thirty? The uh, is that the same thing? The the uh, agenda twenty thirty. Have you heard about that? Yeah, yeah. That was yeah, Denise written asked about, about agenda twenty thirty. It was supposed to be. Um, they had to extend it to twenty thirty because they missed their they mark. Missed the mark. Uh, event two hundred one is uh, the simulation game for the coronavirus, hosted by the John Hopkins, and you see who's on the board, and many people that are on the board were in, tangentially part of the COVID-19 task force, or meaning the initiative like FedEx and UPS. They were, they, were on the, on, uh, they were at the Event 201. The same day that Event 201 happened in October 2019, we had Wuhan military games going on. The same day. The same, and at the same time, 
they were gathering the World Economic Forum in Davos. And you should see it's online. The clips that I've caught from there, uh, establishing the, the things that they were discussing, like pseudoscience, like deep fakes. Yeah, the deep fake technology is ridiculous. That's why I refuse to use it. Um, I was telling some people recently, I was thinking I was telling Ryan, I was like, if I use deep fake technology, then people would wonder if it's really Trump or somebody, like if I'm doing a Christopher Walken. I was like, I don't want it to be something where people don't know if it's really the person. But you can, make, you can make it a little a little bit more. I mean, it's Goofy. very. I know you're making it specifically obvious. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but, 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 yeah, there, like the Boris thing that we ch that checked out a few weeks ago. And um, I think it was Sig, right? Or it was Bulldag. Bulldag's not here tonight? No, Dag's not on th this evening. Where's Dag? Where's Dag? Um, but yeah, I think the idea... Um, Sig also says that he can feel someone in a second. Yeah, I think that's something that some of us have the ability to to to, to flush out what kind of uh, situation we're getting into, and some people are still deceptive. You think you got it, and they were really good at faking you. So it's not like it yeah, always they're works. They're called covert narcissists. Yeah, those may be the ones that I've, I haven't been able to catch, but I think there's been about four or five people that I've known in my 42 years that I decided to never see for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? Where you've probably had yeah. those, right? Where I'm like, oh, I don't care if I ever see that person again. And it, you'd be surprised. It wasn't like girlfriends it was people rotten people that i was like that's a horrible human being right there and i don't ever want to see that dude again you know like what? and friends you know that you thought were friends and they wound up being frenemies and you're like screw that i'd rather <laughs> never see you again you know what i mean so uh, i'm curious did did bill because i realized who the bill was that went on your page did you continue discussions did he no did so he i i quickly went back and just said hey you should check out what yeah, mary Ann's talking was about was there anything else after that i don't think he responded i think because i i had said check out the show beyond later and he never responded but then i saw your note below you're like leave mark alone what if you have a problem with me i love that you're like leave mark alone. you have a problem with me deal with me you know what i mean but the thing i thought was interesting about him and this is just me speaking from an outside you know peanut gallery you know yeah, he's a prime example of a guy who just goes and says a bunch of crap and then just says, "You're a racist." I couldn't believe that he ended his thing with that. And Did right he after, call you, you a racist too? No, you remember oh, you and you were just yes. said, "Look, um, this is my nationality, my I background." I don't think it was Bill that called me a racist. He called me materialistic because I wanted my things. If you're so woke, why do you want thi things made in China? I'm like, what are my things? A water filter? Oh yeah, my but I think his. Filter? I thought his last note to you was, well, maybe I don't he's know. Maybe called me racist. I don't, th I mean. No, he just said something weird at the end. He goes, well, I don't know when you, t when you t t turn this way. I remember we had these great, this great relationship. See, I, didn't, some... I didn't read it. I stopped. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, was... anyone who's going to hate on me. I know. And... You should, you're better off. You're better off. I, cu I couldn't. I thought of Joe Rogan. No, don't read the comments. I mean, if it's your friends. Don't um, read the comments. It's so true. You're right. Rogan says, don't read the comments. He doesn't read the comments. That's interesting. This, by the way, is turmeric. Turmeric, I've heard good things. Drink? I've heard turmeric. <laughs> I've heard turmeric is an interesting thing. I don't know about drinking it. Maybe splashing it on top of something would be interesting for me. But <laughs> it's a tea for. It's great for inflammation. It has no sugar in it. Is it really? Oh yeah. You know, oh, it's been goodness. funny. I've been Tumeric? saying for the, for the first time in my life. Like these couple of fingers over here randomly will start like I get like throbbing pain. I'm like I think I'm getting yeah. like can blame your donuts there, Mark. <laughs> it's my donuts, <laughs> guys. It's my strawberry donuts. I'll tell you what though, I'm so glad I, I gave it an attempt at it. I did a pretty decent job, and since I did not get to Obco, I'm gonna figure out a way to make <laughs> one that's not with sugar. I'll make one that's made out of well, um, you know if you don't have sensitivity turmeric. to gluten and sugar and 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 uh, oxidative vegetable oils or whatever they use. I mean, I know they're yummy. Listen. No, I don't I use that. that. So I use it. So what I do is canola oil or... Um, yes. No, yeah, I use like that, olive that oil. That is an omega-6 genetically modified inflammatory... I'm sorry, I meant olive oil. Is olive oil oh, okay? okay? Okay, yes. Olive oil is good. Although, really, oils, um, you shouldn't heat them because then they become oxidative. Okay, so, so I'm coconut, still doing bad. Coconut, 
on like I put my oils after like I remember my coconut friend oil. came and I didn't mean to cut you off for your recipe go ahead no no no, no. so could I use coconut oil to to cook donuts yes uh, but yes, it's the but same thing it oxidizes to 114 118 after that it, it it's just it becomes oxidative that's 114 118 Fahrenheit okay and you need to be I think they said three 40 something in order to to cook donuts 340 degrees fahrenheit so basically using any oil is going to oxidate and no matter what it's going to be bad for you no matter what you use whether it's olive oil or you're using pretty oil. pretty much i mean i don't think olive oil would make a good donut it was really good with it was, olive oil <laughs> yeah okay. it was really good you know what it is so you made it you have the whole like fryer and stuff no i just put it into a little thing you know and i just popped it in did a little flip a row <laughs> <laughs> and then i laid out a bunch of them over there and then i made the the frosting <laughs> i'm gonna do it again and it's gonna be better next time i swear and oh. i think here's the thing though i'll make one of the turmeric <laughs> no, i'm just kidding no i won't be good no, I, be have terrible. To, I don't know if this is like i should share it share this one <laughs> We go down the go down the hill with with Zach. And before I knew it, he would be he's having ice cream or having chips, and I would be. Oh really? Oh my god! Oh my god! One day he ate these 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 candies. Oh my! I was, I'm just like, I'm really a food Nazi. I'm, I'm just like, no, don't say anything. And then it's like he's he would say I'm. I'm going to eat a headache because he would get, he call get it, a He called eating He an gets egg. headaches. He gets he gets severe headaches, but they would be worth it. <laughs> it would just be in like it would be like a meditation where he'd just be eating the corn chips for like I wouldn't hear a word from him and I'd just for for a good half an hour maybe an hour. That's just, hilarious. <laughs> just <laughs> maybe he'd be upset me me saying this but i say it with so much endear endearment so cute everybody has so their uh, their their poison so to speak you know they are poison they're so. poison and i'm very i'm just very having gone through chronic chronic pain and chronic illness and and it's like also like you're not gonna get the better of me corporation you're not go and you know i'm not gonna let you poison me f yeah. you Yep. And then it's like when when someone like I did a dance video to this week on the beach, I I was, you know I'm censored. I looked like in in an hour and a half, and I had two thousand views on my music video. Wow! The backdrop was beautiful. I used this song that I love, and I just propped the camera, and it looks like, I mean it looks fake. My background looks fake, and it's the beach in low tide, and I'm just dancing because I'm a dancer. Um, that's awesome. And, 2, and someone's, views. someone's like, you, you know, you have the body of a 25 year old. And I'm like, yeah, I worked. I used to be chubs. If you see my before and after picture. I mean, they used to they used to kick me on the ice mark and call me fat. So that my friends, frenemies, I guess, friends used to call and say uh, tub of lard and just hang up really um, wow yeah they used to prank call me and then when i was 13 went to a party and we played spin the bottle and all of a sudden the boys liked me a lot because of my lips because and and they would make fun of my lips and in greek lips is helia and i actually said my, to myself at 16 years old when i get older i'm gonna have a surgery and and make my lips smaller Really? That was your plan? That was my plan. I don't know when it was. Like, I was speaking to someone who, he turned out to be a plastic surgeon, and he's like, is that silicone? I'm like, no, those are my lips. That's like, so now it's like, it's it's not even like, you can just buy, buy your lips, buy your ass, buy your boobies, buy it all. Just, um. Everything's fake. Fake, false, and phony. 
as uh, X-22 says. And the, uh, the the crazy thing about it is everything fades. The only thing that doesn't fade is, well, even fade, I was going to say is, is someone's personality and their love. But at the end of the day, look at Sleep Sofa Joe. If you look at this dude back in the 93 crime bill thing, he's pr- he's pretty passionate. Hey, look, we're going to do this. We're going to take this thing. My Aunt Judy, I'm not going to see my wife and my mother. And then all of a sudden now he's like, look, I don't know what happened. Whoa, Sleep Sofa Joe, wake up, buddy. That's why I think it's an act. I think... You think it's an act? Really? Come on, listen. If he Well, he is really, talking more normal. If he had Alzheimer's... This is Alzheimer's we're seeing, right? This is this is dementia, yes? It seems like it, yeah. Right? So if anyone cared about... No one... Why would we allow an incoherent human being? Does he not have a wife? Why is he not um, trying to improve his brain cognitive skills? Like he should get into a hyperbaric chamber. He should definitely get off of grains. Well, they've been doing something. Have you seen him lately? Like he's, oh yeah, he I doesn't sound as much of a moron as usually he does. Like he's oh he's, really? Like he's still like look 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 I saw him look. a moron <laughs> talking about China the other day. Oh, I gotta find it because I need another episode of Donald Trump show. Um, because he says let me, like let me find it for you. Please send it to me. Uh, here's do you, you know what? Okay, you've got all the tabs that I need. So let me tell you what I need. And anytime you ever see it, forward it to me. Okay, this is what I put out the other way other day into the universe. You're you're huge on this. Okay, here's what I'm putting out into the universe. I. I want people to send me clips when stupid reporters say stuff like, you tell me that, Mr. President, or say stuff like, well, if that was the case, then why didn't we do it, Mr. President? And then, like, I could take that and make a, an episode of the Donald Trump show about it. Be like, well, I'll tell you why, moron. And then I'll just, like, create a bit out of these dummies that'll never get a response from the president. Do you know what I mean? But I need good stuff like that. I need, like, good stuff just like that, the one that you're trying to find. That'd be massive to be able to create another episode based on these morons. You know, there's so much content, though, that you can use to make these episodes. It's like, I just have so much fun making them now. Yeah, that's the key, to have fun. When I'm going to do my little um, mask in the home wearing, I'm going to have fun. I, I'm like... When I went to do my dance video, I was so happy to be in the beach with my waterproof iPod. And I asked, like, I put on a telegram here. I'm like, does anybody want to do any skits with me? Because, you know, I studied uh, theater growing up, and, like, I'm into, I just want to be silly. Well, that's the key to life. This is why I do it every day of my life. <laughs> like, every day, it's like, what are we going to do? I, I, I think my favorite thing about having a no wire, or like, the unscripted thing is awesome. But then also to go out and every day know that I have a goal of creating a face swap. I don't know what it's going to be. I never know what I'm going to go out and try to do. But I usually think as I'm about to go and do it, like, I don't know how I can get anything to, to be decent. Like, I have no idea. Because you're creating something out of scratch. And then all of a sudden it forms itself. And then you start your mind. It's like every other creative, you know, idea I have where one idea leads to another and then leads to another. And then I'm saying, we're coming up with stuff like, Poison and Sleep Sofa Joe and Xi Hole and the Fluhan. I still don't know why Trump is calling it the China flu. He should be calling it the Fluhan. And I have something. I did you hear about this Three Rivers um, Dam in China? It's called the Three Rivers Dam, I believe. And something like this is just a little paraphrasing, but the bottom line is that there is a there is a dam. Right up the river from Fluhan, and it's part of the Three Rivers Dam. That's the biggest one in the world. Okay, and they say it may, f- it may um, actually, it may collapse. Now, yeah. if this dam collapse, did it? Did it already collapse? No, no, it didn't collapse. But but it's been flooding for for weeks now. So here's my theory: they're yeah. going to let it collapse. Yeah, they're going to. They're going to flood the Fluhan, okay? And then people are going to be like, wait, where did the coronavirus start? They'll be like, oh, it was over there. No, it was over there. Oh, no, no, it was over there. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. They're going to wash the Fluhan away. They're washing, well, just like they burned uh, Precinct 3 and Omar Sabri's properties and 
and uh, El Nuevo and La Raza radio station because George Floyd, it was like Ozarks on coronavirus. So just real quick. So this week they lifted the gag order. Ooh, so they had, yeah. they had said that, okay, so let's say there was body cam footage from Thomas Lane. That still hasn't been released. A consortium of, of media said that they want to televise this or make it more available to the to the press why because let's say first of all to attend the hearing or to to go in let's say i was a journalist i would have to have flown to minneapolis i mean, i'm a journalist if i wanted to see the footage fly to minneapolis to have access to it i heard about that but you have one hour to access the footage you have to social distance you have to disinfect the computer and it's a big pain in the booty. Then there's the gag order. Gov- maybe I've said this before, but, but, but Governor Tim Waltz, Jacob Fry, Keith A.G., Keith Ellison, corrupt, corrupt, corrupt. They have all, this has been tried in the media. They have straight up called them uh, Derek a murderer. Whether he murdered him or not, what happened to guilty innocent until proven guilty now when you find out again i will repeat george floyd said i can't breathe three times before ever leaving the vehicle in fact he asked to be put on the ground so did george floyd kill george floyd he also swallowed something according to the transcripts according to the body cam footage, according to the testimony. So you have all these officials who are trying this case in the media, and then you have a gag order against the officers. Why? Derek Chauvin has not talked to anybody. Thao, I don't believe, has talked to anybody. Kang has not talked to anybody. Thomas Lane has talked to, to, to people. So this is clearly not a fair trial. No. So this, this week... This week they lifted the gag order, and what was interesting too. Um, so, so is this does the gag order uh, the, that lifting? Does that mean that so someone like uh, Don Lamont can call and get him on the air now and like have Chauvin to have a conversation, or is that still not allowed? No, it'll be it'll be allowed that they can share their side of the story. And when is that official? Well, it was just lifted on. Um, on the twenty on, on on July twenty first in an eighteenth floor courtroom in the Hennepin County Government Center, Judge Peter Cahill lifted the gag order and stated that he would soon ru- rule on the release of the po- police body cam for a video so that others can see it. I have just ordered the transcript. Why? Because I was not allowed to attend. I I missed the slot. So what happens is that. Um, you you have to basically. I worked with a pool reporter, so it's like secondhand fumes that that I had to rely on someone else's notes to write this story. Now I know this story, so that I could fill in the gaps. And what I did, because I'm a smart cookie, is that I got two pool reporters. They didn't know that, but I got two pool reporters so I can get more notes to look at. <laughs> wow. Do you follow me? Yeah, yeah. So you can c- compare notes. Yeah, and one woman, one reporter from the Washington Post, Holly, was amazing. I mean, her details and such. But now I've ordered the transcript. I must wait two weeks. I paid $175. This is all money out of my pocket. You know what would be funny? Yeah. Since you have her detailed reporting of whatever it was that you looked at, you should find the story that CNN ran with based on her reporting and just show it next to her detailed reporting because well, you know it was CNN some left was there. I mean, the big media media players were there. So, um, but was but yeah. Because I, I feel like what happens is that there are some good reporters in the mix who are really getting to try no. to get the bottom, but they're not. You're never. They're never able to say the truth. No one. Other than than I, please correct me if I'm wrong. Has told anyone that Derek show that George Floyd said I can't breathe three times. No, I've never heard anybody else but you say that. 
leaving the car. Yeah, that's crazy too. That you no, know even in their notes, um, because I read the transcript, so I know. Um, and I still have tons of notes to look at, tons of transcripts from Thou. So they're all out on bail, with the exception of, and so Derek is is doing it via Zoom Zoom. Here's the thing with this: these people are scapegoats. This thing is just a created. You know, the the entire thing is just dragged out so long now, and where it's are so we? Where mark. where are we exactly? You brought us up at the beginning. How many people have died since exactly. this guy? And nobody still points out. They're still to this day. They're putting statues that will remain in Minneapolis forever to a man who was a five time criminal. Yeah, you know what? He should never have been murdered. It was a horrible thing. Horrible. People are murdered every single day of all colors and creed. And it's a horrible thing. Same exact thing. And the bottom line is, yeah, you know what? Every black life matters. And every life matters. You're right. Maybe we should say it to be clear. It would be nicer to just say that every human being matters and that we should all really be connecting. Maybe that's less divisive than saying all lives matter. Just saying like all human beings are important and like should be valued. Maybe that's better because, like, I feel like these people are just looking for a fight. I heard someone say say something the other day, like, if you don't support it, then shut the hell up. I was like, whoa. I'm thinking to myself, okay, if you don't support it, shut the hell up. Is this America? I don't have to shut the hell up, first of all. Yeah. If I don't support something, I could be as vocal yeah. as I want about it. It's called my my rights to speak, free speech. But now they want to take that away from me. And they want to try to censor the free speech. And you know what? I think you're right. Marianne, what I'm going to do tomorrow, guys, I'm going to create like code word, okay? Like the, today's day 573 in a row, okay? But from, from here on out, let's say till day 600, I'm going to stop mentioning the word Trump in my titles completely, okay? In, rea- in reality, um, y- y- it would be even advisable to change all of them and see what happens. Just oh, go experiment. backwards and go backwards and take them all and just switch the titles out now. I I, I would ask actually, um, may, maybe I'd ask how YouTube works, but it's just like I, I, when you're putting in the tags, I don't even put, even put I put Rona. I'm scared to put anything. Not that I'm monetizing, but I'm I don't want them to to, to take down the videos. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm to. Backing the- them up now on on BitChute and Brighteon, but. But still, um, there's you know, like so I, many pages. It's so hard to keep up. Like I signed. Did you did you get on to um, Parlor yet? Yeah. Are you on there yet? Uh, I, I the way I registered. Now, you are. Yeah, I'll look for you. Anyway. I can't do everything. I mean, I, I know wanna... it's so hard. Like I'm I trying, can, can. but Sig Sig was like, you should try. Um, parlor parlor so i went on and then i'm posting like some funny stuff i put poison's bit up there and then i put up the 13th episode of trump show i'm like that one's gonna hit hard and then the how sour is your don lemon that one's a great episode where it looks at how how hip, hip, he's the biggest hypocrite i've ever seen in my life yeah, 2013 that yeah and so i'm like okay that's gonna get a lot of views i don't know how you get people to look at things like on when you're new especially like a parlor thing nobody knows you yet good content just sits there and dies it's a weird thing. Really? Yeah, I don't know how you no, get it to be a, seen. It's a matter of like people Maybe it's are putting the... it in their profile now. Follow me on Parlor, especially after this ah. week. That like for Twitter, so like yeah, on Twitter I have a good posse of people now. You know, Sig included, Dag included, and um, I don't know if you know Teeter Totter. No, um, I have to check him out. I think he's maybe posted. He teeters on top of it. He puts a he puts out a lot of stuff on Israel, and like I can't go too close to that because I'm already I'm already talking about vaccines, and I'm full force on vaccine safety and calling out. Fa- so I have to call call my battles out. You know, well, like you know what scares me about the religion thing about doing anything with religion at all is the amount of death. And the hatred and the religious side of things when it's like, if you don't believe what I believe, I hate you. I could kill you like the weird stuff. And I heard something pretty crazy the other day that if you try to take away people from the Muslim faith, for example, then you become an infidel and they can murder you. They will like you become an enemy. If you try to steal anything about Israel, you're dubbed an anti-Semite. 
there you go too well that's the that's the big one that you can't say anything i'm not an anti-semite and and when i did my 23 in me uh with i had eskenazi jew blood and the eskenazi are known at, to be highly intelligent and then something zach knows this story i i brought it to him and i said they took my judah away from me and there is a story behind that but to say anything negative about israeli intelligence like that's why i give kudos to like helen of destroy and and uh harry vox for ha or, and and uh abby martin who's been talking about palestine and israel and has had the balls like totally like se you know you get censored so anyway all of this to say teeter talk um shares a lot about stuff about um zionism and i i just have to choose choose my my battles that's not my area of expertise um other than to say well who owns who owns the media well, I why is why is pornography illegal in in um, why is pornography illegal in Israel? But is the one you know who is behind the pornography? I interviewed Dr. Michael E. Jones. I was banned for a week on Twitter. I got punished. I published. I did um, parody on Sasha Baron Cohen's ADL um, speech because it has to do with censorship. Punished. Michael, Dr. Michael E. Jones has had all his books taken off of Amazon. They are digitally, you know, stop bit burning, like bits. This is like the modern day burning of, of the Library of Alexandria. Jeez. So scary, this world we're living in right now. And we're, we're just steamrolling towards a communist nation. And it's more even that. It's just like I, I always get back to this. It haunts me. A buddy of mine in high school said, he used to say this like, I don't know how often, but I heard him say it a few times. He said, every major civilization, every country that ruled the world has fallen. Every civilization has fallen is the way he used to say it. And he said, and the yes. United States will fall to one day. And I was like, whoa, but he's right. He's right. And if you have idiots like Sleep Sofa Joe in charge... And they're falling asleep at the wheel while people are saying, hey, remember we were going to sign this thing? And he says, really? Did I say that? And they're like, yeah, you did. Okay. My Aunt Judy said I could use a pen. Freaking sleep sofa. Yeah, well, they're accomplices. And that's why, like, where do you draw the line of, like, oh, I have to, I have to follow the Ministry of Salud, Salud and I have to spray these chemicals. Because, like, the, the reason I'm, I'm jumping, but it's, like, the whole thing, like, I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my job. Like even Del Big Tree, they asked him, like, do you wear the masks? It's like because I have friends here, they they have boycotted all places, including the only organic little store. But people people have a um, online market now. So point is to be like a militant. I'm not going to wear the mask, as opposed to be like just go along with it, go in for five minutes, get what you want, and leave. Um, well, I think, um, you know, we're, where I am and where I live, I have to because they won't let you in places. It's crazy. Like, you can't go in without it. But what scares me, and you were touching on this before, like, oh, well, you can't get on the plane, sir, unless you show us your vaccination paperwork. I'm sorry, I won't be getting that. I will give you a neck chop. Have you ever got a neck chop, sir? <coughs> Hurts a lot. Okay. It kills. A neck chop would be the worst thing to get, I think. Well, there, there, um, someone in our medical freedom um, group filmed. She was asked to deboard from the airline. She really? She went onto the plane and she said, I have a medical condition. And I didn't know it until I saw the footage. Like, I, I interact with this person or, or support their tweets or we're in the same group. And uh, she had mold toxicity. And she has it on camera where the airline, I forget which airline, if it's Delta or United, whatever, main one, tells her to get off. She goes, I'm not breaking any law. She was so calm. I, I really, like, really need to work on that to just re remain composure because I get so wound Stay composed. Up. It's tough to stay composed. I get because... decomposed. I get decomposed because I'm looking at it and going, this is a whole waste of time. This is petty. You're, you're taking my time. You're power tripping. 
fuck you, excuse me, and then I, I lose it. And I, I, I'm working on it um, to, to, this is my, this is really my work. But you're also dealing with a lot of other stuff at the same time. So, you know, I always say f for me to three kids, real estate business, that's actually f now f moving, it's cooking, and then a live show every day. Same thing, like at some some point, there's like a moment every day where I say to myself, oh, some, to myself I'm like, I can't believe I'm going to do it again today. I'm going to go out and do another four hours tonight. You know, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'll think it for a split second, and I'll be like, yep. And I just, like, the, I just drop the, the fear. It's a split second of fear comes over me. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm going to go do another four hours tonight? Yep. And then that's it. But, like, it flashes through my head on a daily basis, and then I'll say the, the, another thing that comes up, and be like, why? But why are you doing it? And then I just say to myself, because the world needs a lot more light. And whether one person tunes in, eight people turn, tune in, or a thousand or a million, we're affecting real change. This is, to, to me, life is about affecting change one person at a time positively. Make an effort to see someone smile and you be the reason that that happened. And this is my reason for living. I'm understanding it more and more day five, seven, three in a row, but I understood it pretty early on that, that I'm meant to come out here daily in order to generate energy for the world. And in that, you guys give it back to me. Like Sig and all my friends, Transparency Rob, all these people over here, they, they give back. And it's when I say to you, if you're really looking for happiness, start giving. Stop listening to the negativity it's taking. It's not giving. And remember the agenda. The agenda is against you. I think of that too. Like some days I'm like, well, why am I doing this? Nobody, I, I can't. It was already hard to get into the mainstream. And now it's the reverse where they're, they're censoring me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so like I feel defeated it doesn't last long, but because it's a compulsion and it's a compulsion to, to, to research and to share. But remember too, the, the key or the goal of these people is they think that you are going to give up. They think I'm going to give up. They don't understand that when someone has a will to deliver, you can't ever break that. All you can do is think that you know the man, you know the woman, and how they're going to act and what they're going to do if they're going to respond. But you have no idea if they have that thing, yeah, that like, unbreakable like, thing. Like calling me a has-been, like by someone that I, that I care about, that I love. But that's been fuel, like we talked about last time. And then I was speaking to a friend. It's and fuel, like, that's right. You're, you're not a has-been. You have what's called staying power. That's right. I well, Rob, I love that Rob you called back to that because true guys, remember when someone says you can't or someone says something like, remember, it's just noise. But when someone says you can't smile and just remember that's fuel. Thank them for that fuel. Thank you. Oh, thank yeah, you for I giving me your you. garbage. I thank you. It, I see. So you know what? Watch me. You're so much. Yeah. Just, you know, that's the, the bottom line. I always say like. I don't know what happens to today. I don't know what happens tomorrow. All I know is that I'm going to keep showing up. And no matter how much they try to shut me down, I could see the future. And I know where I'll be standing one day down the line in the gr group of people that will be joining with me building. And it may not be forever. It may never happen. But I see it. I can visualize it. And that is the first step to attaining. That is the first step. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that so... Is, that is the first step. I mean, I don't know what the, the future holds, right? We're, we're all in uncharted territories. Everybody's kind of prickly unless they're lobotomized and numb. Yeah, uh, so crazy so, right now. So, and, and you know, like m when I, when I'm like, should I come back to America? There's been maybe one or two people that, that say come back home. Uh, there's people here who say they don't know what the future in Costa Rica, because after November, w w then what? The 18th, right of November. Um, November. Like, where do I go? I don't have a home, Mark. I think, here's my thought. I think you do go back. I think you have to figure out where, though. I don't think you go back to where you went. I, th I think you go somewhere else. That's just my yeah, feeling. The only place that, that really is, is Florida. I don't, I don't Florida is someplace you like? 
I, I need warm. I like, I was going to say being half naked. I like just being, L.A., it's cold at night. It's cold. Yeah. It, it, like, I like being, I like being hot. I like, I like hot, and, and here it's very, it's raining. I guess also for what you do, too, you need to be on one of the coasts, right? I mean, like, you can't be in, like, New Mexico. You know well, I mean? it's, you funny have to be you like... say, it's funny you say that New Mexico is very dry, and I have a good friend there, and she says there's a very good community. So I was it's the first place I thought of was New Mexico, but I didn't know if you would ever consider. Yeah, what, what, it's interesting that you said New Mexico. So I was just about to say it's it would be New Mexico because I, I have... I have a, fr a friend there, and she's very similar to me. She's also a journalist. She's very sensitive. Santa Fe? Uh, she's in Santa Fe? Or, I think it's Santa Fe. Yeah. I think so. I mean, I would love it. Like, people are, are every day or literally ask me, is this a good place to bring my kids? Should I? And I'm thinking, like, Let's what, go. What, are you, how, what are you thinking? Like, you're, it's, that's another reason they don't want to open the borders. Do you know how many people will leave? Well, but so they, that's if they, if they think that the grass is greener on the other side. The thing is, here there's nature. That's why I'm here. That's because there's no, that's, community. That's true. That's true. I'm saying so. Here's my philosophy or my thought process on this, based on what we're talking about. Santa Fe, New Mexico is the first place that popped in my mind when we were talking yeah, that's about weird this. That you said that. Well, we always talk. You and I always talk about the you know the psychic connection. Yeah, um, yeah. But I thought about that. My first thought was that. Then I thought about South Carolina. I thought about um, like um, Hilton Head for some reason. Uh, but then I went back to Santa Fe. But my thought was this: like you should stay till November, and then you should absolutely go to Santa Fe. <laughs> I like how it so specific. <laughs> yeah, I'm like that's like done deal. You got to go see Santa Fe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just seems how about like voting. But how about voting? Oh, then you then you come out here instead of you come in like October, late October, and you're in in Santa Fe and late like, October. Like I want to go to AMP. I want to go to the conservative. Event. When's that? I. It was a conservative event that I I went with Zach last year, and we we. Um, with Mickey Willis, who did a Plandemic, and we shot with, I mean, we filmed Andy No and and Mike Cernovich. Oh, okay. And uh, the, the man who started, I forget his name, Brian, uh, who did the Walk Away Movement. And just, there was some amazing, um, amazing, I met Dustin Nemos there. Uh, I met a lot. It was my first conservative. Maybe I wasn't dressed conservatively, although in the hotel I was dressed with my babushka ah. Russian hat and a, and a coat because it's like is so it, warm is outside. Is it AMP and they or is all it? I love the AC. It was in Doral. It was in Trump Towers. No way. Is it called AMP or a AMPED? No, AM, AMP, AMP. AMP, and it's an event? And I should know what it stands for. I was going I was just going to see if there's another one coming up this year. I have a feeling there everything's is. there is one. Unless they cancel it. They, I feel they like everything's canceled. canceled. The RNC. It's like why did he cancel the RNC? You know, I have it online. What the hell? I, I as I jokingly put into the face swap I made for you tonight. Um I think Trump right now realizes the only chance he has to beat to Sleep go. Sofa Joe is to come out and start saying, wear, wear a mask. Look, if you don't wear the mask, yeah. you may not vote for Trump. Look, I want you to be alive, okay? If you're not alive, you get coronavirus and die. It's not good for Trump either. So just wear the freaking mask. That's why he mask. says he's the, we're the ventilator kings? Because it's like Ugh. I was having this discussion with Helen. Like, come on. He knows by now they're killing people. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Well, you brought up a good point, the idea that the ventilators are killing people. Why does he keep talking about ventilators? Look, we've got, we're giving ventilators for people because we know they're killing people. So we're just like, hey, China, why don't you take them all and kill some people? Um, like it's not only like, oh, we're selling, we're selling them to other countries and they're made yeah. by 3M. I think that I, I've heard who I ran into a buddy the other day whose wife works at a hospital, a local hospital, and he said that they've come a long way with understanding how to use some of these drugs. 
where they use the hydroxy on a certain thing when it's at this time, if it's been over this amount of time, they use X and then blah, blah. And so they feel like he's, they've gotten a handle of this thing for the most part. If you've had a, if you have a comorbidity or something like that, then you're kind of screwed. You know what I mean? But in general, if you, but that could be the same thing with the flu, you know, to your point, if you have a comorbidity, you get the flu. I'm sorry. You may not make it through. Um, but Jack Nicholas, his wife, 80 years old, both of them got it, and they were fine. Tom yeah. Hanks, Rita Wilson, Jack. both got it, and they're fine. Whatever. If they even got it. I think they were handed a script, and they said, Could you're, be. hey, Hanks, you're going you're gonna to play a COVID-19 survivor, and then down the line you're going to go in, and you're going to call other people stupid if they're not you know, going to shame them. Whatever. Yeah. Whatevs. What, Whatevs. There's like an Excel sheet of all the notables that have gotten the coronavirus. Uh, yeah. And- it's all, it's all, it, like you said, like John Rappaport said, there's coronavirus. There's a family. You, it is not a diagnostic tool. It's all a haga, whatever, with the numbers. Well, if the, the higher the numbers, the, the bigger the effect for CNN. Oh, we hit a million, a million in a week. We did a million in a week. Yeah, how many deaths? 10,000. Wait a second. The numbers don't jive, buddy. 130,000, over 2 million uh, cases, and now we have a million more, and there's only 10,000. Brian says uh, it's a psyop. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it seems like it couldn't be anything less than that. Psyops, he says. Yeah, psyops. I call it, like George Floyd, I call it a multi layered psyop. Psyop on psyop on psyop. On top of each other. Just, you know, he, I said, did I say this to you the other day about it seems to me like yeah. if, you, if you stand back and look at everything that's going on with all this negativity from the left, um, it seems to me very clear that there's a shadow government. Yeah. Like it seems so clear just looking at how powerful this machine is that there's a secondary government because Trump has no power over what's going on out there. He's and finally he's sending a national guard. The reserve of the, the Federal Reserve. What happened? Oh, who is Trump is? Yes. He took over, yes. right? Yes. So Brian says Hanks has 2-1 in his tweet. And so, yeah, in, in that tweet early on, he says... He's using a Corona typewriter, and he says Rita has beat me, two hundred by two hundred and one points. This Why is prior. Saying, Tom Hanks. This is prior to getting it. He said that. No, while he was under quarantine in Australia, oh. he says like like they're bored, whatever. I I tweeted that too, like. And the two hundred one thing. Re- re- the Corona virus, Corona typewriter. Um, and you're saying that beat, Rita beat me, but there was another part to the tweet that was weird. I don't remember though, Brian, but there was, there was something else. Um, it was, um, interesting. So that was the, and Madonna, thing. Madonna was, she, she, I told you this, she, I put this in one of my videos. She's doing a little video and she puts the, the, the fever gun to her temple and she goes, Ninety-seven point five, is that normal? And right away, I'm like, oh my god! Just before the Rona, they conveniently lowered the average body temperature to ninety-seven point five. Oh no, folks, it's not ninety-eight points. Ninety-eight. What is it? Ninety-eight point six. It's always been ninety-eight point six. No, now that it's it's so her, when she said, "Is that normal?" So it goes. It plays on the whole. New normal. The new normal, ninety-seven point five. And then it plays on the the criminalization of uh, the cough and the fever, the weaponization of the fever gun, and then she did another video, and there was a globe. It was a very high production, and the globe was on like in blood, and I even I'm like, hey Madge, who's doing your videos? Two days later, she announces that she's working with Bill Gates. No way. Wow. Yeah. She's a poster child, just like Lady Gaga did her Not We Are the World from um, my age, One World, again, playing on the New World Order. Yeah. And then they, they raked in millions. Where is this money going? Where is BLM money going when you, when you find that it goes back to the Tides Foundation? This is Obama 
It's going back to Obama. It's going back to Biden. Yeah. Where is all this money going? Twitter and GoFundMe. Yeah. There's some Twitter and GoFundMe do some weird thing. Tw Jack launched a early on uh, raising money to feed the homeless for the coronavirus. And I went on the GoFundMe page and it was a picture of William Chatner. I caught it. Zero dollars. I check four hours later. Now it's it's backed by Leo DiCaprio. And they've That's raised weird. in seventeen thousand dollars. And the ratio, Zach, who like majored in math, like looked at the ratio of the money versus donors and said this doesn't even make any sense. And I caught it. I caught the two screenshots. Four hours. This is effery going on. Effery for it, sure. They're they're raising tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of money. Where is that money going? It's all Ponzi schemes funneled through their five hundred one three Cs. Yep. Look, yeah. there's so much. There's so much. Um, Brian said Gates Agenda two two hundred one back in October. I'm gonna uh, take a yeah. look at that myself. I haven't looked into it. I I can send you footage from that. That's. Yeah, I love Excuse anything that you see. I and I love any time you do see something, you send it over. I appreciate that. Um, well, oh, I'm also wait a second. circulating things from like I'm going back in, in when I was in the future and like retweeting it now and now it's like because early on we were also Zach and I I started like welcome Kansas to the world hunger games yeah. and I, I was going in and I was using like kind of the model of the hunger games and then redoing like looking at what Kansas is good at and like redoing that that's when it was cute now it's not cute anymore. No. Well, I think now it's just kind of scary. People have lost a lot of jobs. People have lost their livelihoods. You know? And the scary thing is there's a very good chance they're going to try to drop another quarantine on everybody, like full quarantine. You know? The numbers, they're starting to push that agenda now. Have you noticed that? This last couple of weeks. Oh! Highest numbers ever! Up, are we above the daily total thousand today? We had another thousand, and we're bound to see. Give it two more weeks. Fauci comes out. See, I told you we would get over a hundred thousand in a day, and then all of a sudden they're going to say, "Look, okay, we have to quarantine again." But Trump's not going to let it happen. But Look, you, you get it, do you don't? Quarantining? What's the deal now? Well, it's quarantine. But it's not like a, there's a few places where they're like, "You need to stay in, or else we're going to arrest you." I've heard stuff like that, like crazy stuff. And if you they do that in, in Melbourne, no, do that did in Melbourne. Did I tell you last time? No. Oh, in Melbourne, they're not even allowed to go out for essential, essential necessities. And unbelievable. There's, there's footage of a of a cop or whatever officer, um, in with a with a with a immigrant, and she's saying, "You're delivering food that's ex expired." They're delivering bread and milk, like communism, straight up. You know, and, and I found out today, I was listening to Corey Diggs, she was doing a panel, and that in Australia, they're forcing people, they're well, they're telling people to wear the masks. There's been 128 deaths only. 128? Yeah, in all of Australia. I, I, that's why the numbers are skewed here, because there's no way... You know, if countries are dealing with such a low number of deaths, we, we, we we're, it's just that they're calling everything COVID here. That like, I wanted yeah. someone to pull over how many people died last year, and how many people died. Well, remember, I showed you that the, that graph, and you can go to the. Oh, CDC. that's right, you did. Yeah, and the bottom, the 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 thought process here, guys, is that if somebody decided that if they could just shift all the numbers from being. X death, you know, uh, cancer or heart disease and shift those into COVID deaths. If you put that year over year over, say, three or four years, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and you look at year after year how many there were deaths for each of these causes, they'd probably be very similar. And then all of a sudden you may see in 2020 that it drops and it goes up in covid and it's because all those deaths were dropped into the COVID category. I'm that's yeah, just a absolutely. theory. They've done that with them. Um, yes, they've borrowed data. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny posted today that she was, I think, at the grocery store, and a masked a masked woman was like, "Oh, you're standing, you're standing too close to me," oh. and 
And Dr. Sherry Tenpenny just answered. She goes, it's okay. I'm not scared of you. <laughs> like, you're the one wearing the mask. And you know what they call people who don't wear masks? They call them bare face. Bare face? Really? Bare face. You're, That's you're such bare. a silly thing. How about just call them, like, normal and you're the weirdo. Say, look, I'm a weirdo. You're normal. Sorry. Because you know what? It's... I saw a meme. Someone was like, we're getting closer to this. And it was a picture of like somebody with a, with a burqa. Yeah. Like, oh, yep. I, po- I posted step a away. burqa picture back in. Um, Maybe it was you then yeah, that I saw that. Back in March. Yeah, I, I saw posted. something. I'm like, how is this different? I posted a black woman who was wearing a mask and then a black woman who was in a full on burqa. Yeah. And, and now. And, and I, I posted this week. I, I was on a page and. and an ad came up for a clinical trial and check this out on the mask. Look how sick this is, Mark on the mask. They showed normal life. Like they showed a parent playing with their child maskless on the mask. And they were saying basically to enroll, enroll in, uh, in the study. And how many are they, are are they going to, a guinea pig. So I just saw it's 11:45. So let's Yes, yeah, 147 here. Um real quick, Brian just said something hilarious. He said tobacco hasn't killed anyone since March. <laughs> I love that, Brian. Hey Hey Brian, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel here because Mary M comes on every week to join me for a down the rabbit hole seg- uh, segment. And then usually it's Friday, so I think next Friday we'll probably do it, right Mary M? Is that to look good for you? Um, and we're going to try to do – the other thing we may consider is during the week I'm going to be doing earlier shows, like lit- literally. So I if you want to try to do on one earlier. earlier show and see if we can get more people. More people on. It would be great. And Why don't we try like a Thursday next call-ins? week? Can yeah, you do Yeah, let's do call-ins. We'll do call-ins the next Thursday. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure we could do that. I how think you, we could take another – I think we. number? I'm pretty sure we could take in another video here. I just have, would have to create a whole backdrop for that. But audio, how would I do audio? That's a good question. You know what? Let me look into that between I now and next week. give people my phone number and they'd be like, any callers call this number. Yeah, how do we work on, that put in? Them on speaker. I'm very like. Oh. Um, yeah. Hey, Matt, I'm not sure if uh, Sig says that Matt's on. Matt, how are you, buddy? Thanks for joining in. I hope you'll subscribe. I think you just followed over on tw- uh, Twitter. The one the one that. I'm not Dad, sure. I'm Dad not sure. A- Sig just said that Matt was on Twitter. I sent Matt over Mark on Twitter. Brian, you're the man. Thank you, buddy. He just subscribed. Yeah, we're going to have another. I mean, every time Mary M comes on the show, we wind up doing three to four hours. So we just did three hours. <laughs> and I have a little puppy upstairs. I was hoping he would. He's kind of moved around a little bit. He kept. He's, he's staying like a good boy over there. He's like this big, guys. Oh, I can't wait to play with him tomorrow. I'm just saying. Oh, you're so cute. You're so <laughs> I'm so cute. excited. I feel like I had a little boy. Like I said, I'm, I'm driving home with this little guy, and I'm like, are you excited to meet your brother and two sisters? <laughs> I'm like, so what is going on with me? Oh, oh he's got this so little sweet. patch on his oh. eye. Oh, my goodness. So sweet. I'm in love with him already. I, You know what? It's a sad thing. I think this is the empath in me, but it's a sad thing. I opened up the gate to my in-laws and where my wife's pulling in and he's still in the gate in the back. And I had that quick flash of the day one day when he's no longer with us. Aww. You know what I mean? I just thought about how much I already love this little guy and how much I'd already hurt. It would hurt me right now knowing that it's going to be, you know what I mean? And, but you know what? Then Life is about feeling. Enjoy every, every moment. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, that's why it's like, if you have someone that you love out there, like give it, why love is a verb why aren't you give showing it. that that you love them give it this you gotta like, give it you know yeah affect that change affect that change and and you know what that's why it's like if people realized how powerful they truly are and like you we're seeing it in a grand scale because the media machine is showing how powerful they could be as they unite against us but if each of us realized how powerful we were and if we connected against the media machine we could take them down we could take them down there's just not enough brave people out there and i think that more people like mary m need to come to the surface more people have to show up and, and continue to deliver the light. 
And I look forward Thank to doing you. that again next week with Mary M. Let's take phone calls next week. Let's figure it out. I'm going to go and figure that out. Can you uh, figure it, figure out how, I don't know how they do I, I was you know always... what? I got Discord. I think I could bring them calls oh, in through can... Discord. Yes, you can. I was on uh, I think Discord. I did send you a Biden clip. You did? Ooh. Yeah. That's it's the clip that I was referencing. He's he's on Zoom. Maybe you can play. It's very sh it's short. You sent it over? Okay, let me see. Oh, wait, is that the one where he says I'm Joe Biden's husband, Joe Biden? No, no, no. Oh, okay, because I have that one. And there's... They're, they're, they're crapping on um, on another bizarre, another bizarre Biden quote. Biden says Trump blames everything on China, and that is the same as blaming it on all Asians because ordinary Americans can't distinguish between Chinese people and other Asian people. Oh, I heard about this, That's, yeah. Do you want to play it short and then we You have that here? Time. Let's see. This is the one you just sent me? Yeah. Okay. I made a pretty crazy funny bit. I don't know if you saw this one, but I did. Uh... Oh, yeah. Here we go. Um... Let's tell you after this. Let's get this one on. Oh, sorry. I've been sleeping so, so late, getting so little sleep. Oh, I know. On, 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 on China. He's blaming everything on the Chinese. He's blaming everything. And people don't make a distinction. Look. As you well know, hmm. from a South Korean and, a, and someone from Beijing, they make no distinction. It's Asia. <laughs> and that's the way he, and he's just using it as a wedge. Look what he's doing now. He's blaming. Oh, he's such a creeper. Look, my Aunt Judy told me I should rub my hands on the back of little girl's uh, hair and smell it. And then I could tell really creepy things in their ear. And then they can make really, like, off-putting faces to the camera. And I'll just say I was talking to them about the last game we played of, of where, where did uh, Uncle Joe's hand go? It's Creeper. Creeper. Who's, and who are these Zoom people? But one is Asian, and they're all nodding. Yeah, they're like, yes, you're right. Absolutely. What the F did you just say? It doesn't even make any sense. Your buddy Brian's awesome, by the way. He said, y'all get some sleep. Awesome. Need our truthers at full strength. Brother, you're you're not kidding. He's very, very awake, and um... I'm glad to see it. You know what? And Brian, just so you know, too, here, like it's this is every single night. Oh, well, tomorrow's gonna be again. We're gonna be doing during the day. So every day, though, forever, and it's just a positivity channel. I like. I welcome. What do you mean you have been doing it in the day? No, but I'm gonna start like tomorrow. I have to. Now that we have well, a you puppy, said, you said that three weeks ago. I know, I know, but now that we have the puppy. Like, oh, I'm gonna have to... the puppy. The puppy's going to make daylight. Day. I don't know. I'm trying to figure this all out. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it all out, people. But I will tell you, for me to be able to play music for you, it's going to have to be during the day. Like, I could, there's no way I could take the guitar out right now and rock out because I'm going to wake up this little baby pup upstairs. And in a way, I kind of want to wake him up so I can hold him. I'm just saying. So I remember doing that as a kid. Well, I mean, with my kids when they were young, I'd be like, my wife would be like, don't wake them up. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> like, shake I, the I, bed. I, yeah, I, I feel like that when I remember um, when I f was first um, started dating my ex, he had come from a trip and he was super tired and he went to sleep. We, we hadn't even like consummated our relationship or anything, but he was upstairs sleeping. And I was so excited to hang out with him. And I would just like, was like, I want to go. I've never been upstairs into his place, but I want to go and like wake him up. And I was just waiting patiently until he woke up um, out of excitement. Anyway, show people that you love them. And For sure. Them. Life is short. Life is I, short. I wish that for myself more than anything to find a partner that cherishes me and loves me and that I can share all my love that I have with them. Um, I hope so. It, it's like I went on a dating app and I, I one person was virtue signaling with a mask. Oh, they no. actually had a mask as their dating, as their, oh, as their profile pic. And then a lot of, like, oftentimes when I go on the dating apps, I'm get, I get more depressed because it's like, I don't sleep around. I don't drink alcohol. Um, and then it's like they're apolitical or they're liberal. 
So it's like that means they're not like I'm assuming can't have a conversation. Not, yeah, they're not awake. And it was already hard to meet someone now under the Rona. If you're picky and not like, you know, like I have a girl, a girlfriend, like all it all she needs is for the guy to be six foot two, like six foot. Like she just needs a big guy and then she'll go and have sex with him. I'm not judging her, but that's definitely not not me. And I know there are men out there who appreciate that. Um, I don't, you know, there's women that don't sleep around or who um, prize. And to be honest, it's also like not only. It's not a safe know, world. world. It's, it's not, not a safe world. It's not a safe world. Like, and a, and a, energetically, a woman is, is. I hope this is not t like a woman is like receiving the man's energy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So to keep yourself like, I'm super picky. I'm and also like I don't have idle. I don't like idle chit chat. Like I I'm I'm not like let's get into it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm not I'm not like a um, snorkeler. I'm like a deep sea scuba diver. <laughs> you know. I want I want it. So we'll see. Listen, I would say, too, as far as it goes, that time is a very interesting uh, variable. And you don't know what tomorrow holds. I would say that the day I met my wife, about a week before, I said I never wanted to date again. Not never, but I was over dating. I'm going to focus on my career. I'm going to get my record deal, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to sign it. And then I met my wife a week later. Maybe it was a couple of days after I, that thought and the rest is history, 13 years. And 14, actually, if you consider. the, We were only together six months when I asked her to marry me. And I dated a girl for four years and didn't even think about marriage oh, yeah. at all. You know, So when you know, you know. But I also would say sometimes it's when you are over it is when it finally hits you in the face. And sometimes um, it never comes or it does and it just is not right. The connection isn't right. But I would say for you, I feel like, you know, Santa Fe is going to be very big for you. <laughs> Just telling you, dude. Just telling you. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I have to you. ask my girlfriend if she's in Taos or if she's in, I think she's in Santa Fe. Who said Taos? Someone said something about Taos here earlier. Holy cow. Wait a second. Did you see that? No. Someone wrote something about Taos in here. Was that, was that Brian? Hold on. He said something about Taos. Was it Brian? Someone's in said Idaho now. Is that okay? Sorry if I've revealed where you are. Someone said Taos in here. I Let me know. see if I can find it. I'm having trouble finding it now. If anybody remembers or someone remembers what they said about about Taos. Oh, wait a second. It's right after the Santa Fe comment. He said Santa Fe's money. And then he wrote Angel Fire Taos. Yep. Well. What's Angel Fire Taos? Was that where you met him or something? No, I met him. Um, I bre I met him. We 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 got our permaculture certificate. Oh, okay. And, so he's definitely uh, well we were, awake. We were awake. In, in Guatemala. I met him. I'm smiling because I remember the first day I met him. It was freezing, and uh, yeah, it was like just in instant. Uh, just hey, happiness. can I say something too? This is kind of cool. So I, last time we talked, you were telling me about, you know, you're going through a change, obviously, right? And I told you about, I told you about the I Need to Be Alone song, that the song says, um, I need to be alone because I feel like I'm finding myself again. And that's a powerful statement. I need to be alone because I feel like I'm finding myself again. And I just feel like every day when you are being alone in order to find yourself again, you get more connected to it. And then like I saw a smile come out of you or just now when you were thinking about your friend. And it's something that I think becomes more fluid every single day when you are alone and finding yourself again. Does that make sense? Because I saw it there. I saw it there and it was a total peace. Like for you were for a couple seconds there where you were like, and I feel like that becomes more and more day after day. Does that make sense? Like it becomes. Yeah, it does make sense. But I also think like, I, I didn't have a boyfriend for, like, almost nine years. Oh, so then that's it's a big impact. And so that just shows how picky I am. And it's like, why are you single, Miriam? Um, there's no shortage of men that are interested in me. It's I'm not interested in them. Yeah. I have 
high standards and I'm you know meaning like for for what's so it's it's like I may be attracted to the wrong type of person I don't know um, and uh, so, oh, yeah. Six said, by the way, Six said that great interview with uh, t uh, Tenpenny. She looked Thank good. You. And you said you looked a little tired. Was it the day after we were? I did we look were? really tired. I looked like, I saw that too. I was like, damn, I looked no good. <laughs> you know what, though? You know what, though? You showed up. I did. You Thank showed you. Up. You showed I up. Looked, I looked, I looked, um, I looked inflamed. But thank you for noticing. <laughs> guys, you guys are like um, a part of the official fourth three-hour episode of Maryam and the, the the descent down the rabbit hole. This is a series. We're just calling the four hours the four-hour tour. Well, how are you? How long are you on with Ryan? Uh, Ryan, well, last night wasn't very long, but we the first couple times we were on pretty long. Now, I had him on yesterday because I'm creating a theme song for him based on, like, uh, Roy Orbison's uh, You Got It. And so we were, we were working on that last night. It's pretty he, cool, what, actually. Does, he, does Ryan play the, an instrument? No, he wrote lyrics, like, that matched the whole thing with face, uh, Facebook. So I just was... I was playing the song, singing it, and I just was... We were trying to adjust some of the lyrics. So that was pretty cool. I love, I, and that's something I offer now as a service. Like someone can have a, either an original song or if you want a song for a friend, for a girlfriend, for a, a spouse, or voicemails. But he said, look, I'm looking to do that. Do you think you could help? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I love Ryan. Um, and I'm so yeah, proud of him for what he's doing. Yes, and, and uh, yeah, he was, he was so considerate when we did our interview together. I, I hopefully, I won't, I'm just getting the, I do a transcript. Mm -hmm. because because initially i thought i'm just gonna put it out but there was there's editing and i've tried to edit a couple of things like the two-hour interview i did with bobby capucci i watched uh, that or i watched a lot of that yeah did you find so did you find my music to be very annoying I no, I actually, it's background? funny you say that. I was thinking about that because I thought to myself while I was listening to this, this is an effective way because when I do some of the shorter bits, or at least I used to do this with the shorter inspirational stuff where I was just powerfully speaking to the camera, I would throw in a little piece of music blown and it would make it even more powerful. And I thought to myself, well, it was an interesting thing what you chose when you, you picked this really like jungle type of music. You're in the jungle, but it was like this really you cool. You found it a jungle type? Or it was, it was, what, what was that? I'm trying to think of the vibe of it. from the movie The Secretary. Was it really? It, it, it's, it's it had a nice vibe to it. It had a very nice vibe to it. Um, and jungle may not have been the right term, but it had a nice vibe to it. It was all instrumental and it yeah. seemed like it was just like, I don't know how you had it, but it was like an hour of the same, uh, music, but it was, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> it was crazy. And so and but it, I, goes I, in and, it goes in and out, but I'm sorry. I, I mentioned it because a lot of people don't like the music and I've had to do versions where, where you take I it take out. out when I take it out. They're like, I can't even, I can't even handle it. Music was awful. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, it's funny you say that because I really like. I've, I've had them where I'll put this on. I'll be like, while we're talking, I'm just like, there's just a little bit of music in the background while we're talking. Like, so tell me, Mary, yeah, what's going on out there? No, you I know, like. But, I like the. Is that jazz? This is a, one of my songs. I wrote this live. I created this live. This is me playing every instrument. Jam to that. I can dance to this like all night. This gets hot right here. Check this out. like tango to me when i hear that reminds me of the tango it is a little tango like the song uh, are puppies moving around should i go get them <laughs> should i go get them do you want to hang out for two more minutes that, means, go get that, that means i'm gonna be on i was like oh you know I'm what do a hard stop it 
No, let's do a hard stop because he just laid back down. I don't want to go get him. If he's gonna, if he cries or if he whimpers, I'll grab him. But I don't want to get start thinking that I'll, he's gonna be grabbed just every time he walks around. Are you putting? Around. Are you training him, or you put paper? Where is he sleeping? You so little... it looks like what happened was this. <laughs> we <laughs> we've been down here on the air, and the puppy got up. I guess he went to the bathroom, so my wife had to clean that up. And then so then she took him for a walk, brought him back in. And then now he's kind of like the, the gates, like the crates open. But then there's also like his little bed outside of that crate. He's in the laundry room. I don't know. Why, why usually you put paper down to train? Them. Yeah, that's Would a good you? point. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Wait, right when now. you say he, like, did he <laughs> pee or he pooped again? No, he peed. He peed. But I mean, we have these training pads, the, oh, so he okay. pees in that. But I like the idea of maybe on the tile too. So if it squirts over or something, you're good to go. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not a bad idea. Um, I was initially, I was last, I think in the beginning of the week, I asked you if if you could play. Um, I I did a a song this this song again from Chariots from Secretary called Chariots Rise. Mm -hmm. So oh, if I see, this is still on. I, I can't believe this. We're shutting it off. Sorry. It's okay. If I send you a song, are you able to just like my mom? If I if I play her a song, she can just play it on the piano. She's just auditory and can just play the piano by by listening to a song. Are you like that? Yeah, I play by ear. Um, so if you play, if you send me something, either there's two ways I could play a song. Either it's just send me the chords, and then I listen listen to it once or twice, and then I'll I'll play it the same, or I'll just create my own version of it, or um, if I listen to it and just give me a little time, I'll find every note. It just takes me a little time because I, I never learned theory. I only play by ear. Um, so, I, so I practiced the song and I, and I posted it on YouTube and, um, if and you send it across, I could try to get the progression down. Cause the issue here with, with YouTube is this, if you play someone else's music as it is on your show, then they'll take the whole program down. So if I play like a like a, a video or an audio track of like for example ABBA if I played ABBA like on the show they'll pull down the show. I can physically play ABBA on my guitar though and sing it and they'll just kind of mark me off as a copyright thing where this they, they you may see an ad next to this but they'll still let the video stay. So what I could do is try to learn the song if you send it over. I just I just want wee wee pad sing you're hilarious. Wheeler, check it out. This is what I got, buddy. I'm going to show Wheeler my doggy. That's my little pup right there. He's a little puppy. His name is Max. He's a good boy. I'll tell you what, this little guy took a five and a half hour ride home with me, and he was kicking it the whole way. He was a sweet boy. He didn't, he didn't fuss at all. Look at that little, this little black, that little black eye. It's not black. That's like dark grayish blue. It's like he's got... It's a weird, cool colors. He's a cool little guy. But my favorite thing Brian, about him Brian is the look has, in his eyes. Because I, I got bit by a dog, and I'm, I'm a cat. You're a cat girl? I am, I'm, a, I'm a cat. I carry cat and bee medicine. Like, yeah, I... I, I like cats, I would, too. I, I like cats, too. I would have sexy time with my, with my cat, sexy Tony. What does that mean? I don't know. I think it's getting late when you say something like that. <laughs> with my cat that's all that's a better way of saying it no but i i always loved dogs and cats i think they're both they're both they both have their their qualities to them but cats if here's the thing it has to be your cat because if you are in a house with a cat and it's not your cat that cat's not your friend that cat's like my this my friend because i'm a cat whisperer they, they... you're the cat whisperer yeah I'm that's a good whisperer and cat whisperer no the, there's something like if you think like i'm cat like then the smell of dog like i don't like the smell of dog i don't like dogs but i like scotty pippins puffin sorry scotty brian's dog is a very special dog and he's like the only dog that i've let into my house that i've that i've that i genuinely like because like brian's dog is grapple. named scotty P puffin yeah brian your dog's name is scotty puffin or scotty pippin Scotty Puppin. <laughs> I love it. 
And my cat was Sexy Tony. That's hilarious. That is so freaking funny. Scotty Puppin. And the funniest thing I've ever had in my life. such a beautiful, special dog. Really? That is so cool, Brian. Very cool. Scotty Puffin. Brian, what kind, again, of dog? Wow, that is the coolest thing. Scotty Puffin. I sent you the song. So if you play it now, are you going to get a band? Well, so no, what I'd have to do is uh, listen to it tonight, and I can, next time we come on, I'll, I'll see if I can play it on the guitar. And I'll use my beat seat so it could sound like a band. Yeah, I could, it just for whatever <clears throat> reason, that song just really gets me in my heart chakra. Chariots Rise. Yeah, I'll pull it up and, and work on it, and next week I could try to play it with the guitar. <clears throat> that would yeah, be interesting had, to see. I had to leave my cats, Sexy Tony. Arguably, Sexy Tony had a girlfriend because he used to come home and um, smell of cheap perfume. Ah, Sexy so, Tony. And Sexy Tony was Sexy Tony. He was a little jaguar. So smart, little Buddha cat. Puppin and Punny Pit Pippin. Who was Punny Pippin? He had, a, he had another dog? He had Scotty Puppin and Punny Pippin? I love that, though. That was I awesome. Brilliant I, idea. I thought it was Scotty Pippin. Siberian Husky, he said he was. Yeah. A Siberian Husky. Yeah, That's I'm cool. I'm sorry they forgot that. You know, it's um, it's funny when you go... For me, it's been 20s. Let's think about this. I had my last dog when I was maybe 18. So it's been 22 years, 24 years since I had a dog. It's kind of crazy. You know, but I love animals. I just didn't, you know, with young kids, you're like, how, when's the, when's too young? I don't want my kid getting bit in the face. You know what I mean? I want to make sure. Well, I pick yeah, I was 13 when I got bit in the face. It was the first time I had to go to the hospital. It scares the Actually, hell out of me. Actually, my friend here, Mateo, has a, has a bulldog named Akua who likes to hump me and has arguably <laughs> like, um, now he has a, 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 a girlfriend. I mean, he, he got another dog in the house. So... But he's another. But like, I don't like dog slobber. I, I, I'm like, like, just think of it. She's a cat, so of course she doesn't naturally. And she, I got bit in the face. Like this scar, is the black Labrador bit me in the face. Oh, people, Brian, by the way, totally get it. That's why I think it's brilliant, buddy. I'm, I'm the biggest Michael Jordan and Chicago Bulls fan. When I saw Scotty Puppin, I was like, what a brilliant name. What a brilliant name to come up with. And I'm I'm a huge fan of, as you can tell, with Poloisen, Fluhan, President Giol. Um, you know, I think there's a fair there's room for more. Sleeps over Joe, you know, bumbling Biden is another one we call him too. He's a bumbler. You hear me? Bumbling, bumbling, bumbling. So here, what we're going to do here on the end here is I say goodnight okay. to Mary Ann. I'm going to play yeah. you guys episode 11 on the way out, and maybe Mary Ann will see if she feels like checking this out. Just to give you a little heads up what this is. This is President G. Hole, okay? And just to understand the comedic value of this clip, Donald Trump is dissecting, because what this is is basically the Hodge twins but Donald Trump is the Hodge twins and he's ripping apart clips. That's what the Donald Trump show is. And in this clip, what you're about to see is Donald Trump is ripping apart a president G hole clip, but he doesn't have a translator. Here we go. <laughs> he doesn't have a translator people. So Mary M listen, um, next Thursday, if you want to come on or we could do Friday earlier as well, whatever, we'll talk about I it between like now and then earlier. Because yeah, I'd like to do it earlier as well, but let's try for like six-ish, my time, which would be for your time, okay? On, on, a, on a Friday? On a Thursday or Friday, whatever, 6.30, 7 o'clock. <laughs> you see what I just did? No. I said six-ish, and then not more than three seconds later, I said, yeah, 6.30, 7 o'clock. <laughs> no, I missed I'm just pushing it down. What the hell? Let's do six thirty seven o'clock, okay? Uh, let's plan on that. Think of it, that four four o'clock is too early, right? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little. So early. five for you, seven for me is good. Also, I have to consider, like, it gets. Uh, yesterday, I was speaking. Do you know Vivian Kubrick? I was speaking to Vivian Stanley Kubrick's daughter. I was going to say, is that Stanley's? Mm-hmm. And and. Um, 
w the, we, it was really late for both of us, even later for her. And it was raining so much and I, I couldn't hear, it gets so loud, like I, it's, so we have to just make sure. Yeah, if there's no rain and we rain every single day. Yeah, we could always switch a day if it doesn't wind up being a like good time. Like in the time. middle of the, uh, through all the night, I lost power. My generator went out because I have a generator so I can be online. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I was like, I'm just going to stay in bed till a whopping eight in the morning until the power comes back on. Because the first thing I think is like, shit, I can't, I can't get online. Sorry that I swore. That's fine. And I can't make coffee. <laughs> I know that to me would be my biggest nightmare. Um Seriously, I can't live without the coffee. I don't know what the hell. Are you drinking coffee. organic coffee, Mark? I'm drinking. No. Yeah. It's no, it's Blue Mountain. Um, Blue Blue Mountain organic coffee. Yeah, actually. Okay, make sure that it's or organic because they're really highly, highly, um, highly uh, sprayed. And 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 if anyone is out there, please thank you for checking out my interview with Ten Penny Sig. Yes, guys. She's I'm sure. He's a rock star. Dr. Sher Sherry Tenpenny is a rock star. And yeah, I started watching that. I can get back and watch it's too late I, I now, just, but tomorrow. I just want to say, I was doing my research on Google and techno fascism, and I came across this doctor, and I was like, this woman was in the establishment, and she's, call like, she's calling them out. Who is this woman? So I put her in my story, flash forward to samoa that i cover and then i end up like and she's vaxxer i mean cherry dr cherry runs vaxxer oh and really then i end up yeah and then i end up writing and she's in our medical freedom group and now i'm collaborating with her and in fact my copy editor is copy editing for vaxxer because i told them you know there's no point in having brilliant content if it's not seo optimized and my stuff on my site is SEO optimized. So now my my copy editor is working um, with her as well. So I just love collaborating. And like then I get the honor of interviewing Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. So yeah, guys, if you honor. haven't seen it yet, head over and watch the full interview over on Mary M's page. And remember, and next also week sign up to my my channel, and you can see my latest is a dance video on the beach. Yes, subscribe. Subscribe to all channels. Subscribe to Mark's channel. Yes, please do. Like and I, did you I'm see here I every day. I plugged you today on Twitter. I'm like, why yes, is Yes, thank this? you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I, I really wish appreciate more it. People would do that. You know, especially good ones. Like, there's a couple of these good Donald Trump shows that I, they should be viral. Like, the Donald Trump show, what's good about them is it's poking fun at the hypocrisy, but it's also taking all this content that Joe Biden doesn't want to, want to be seen. He doesn't want people seeing this stuff because it makes him look like crap. But it's being shut down by the censors, you know. They see it. They see Trump. They see his face. They see whatever because they're, they're probably processing the video, whatever it is. They don't know it's comedy. They just see it's a conservative piece. They pull it or they just, they just let it sit. Because I think that's the other thing I'm learning is it's not that they – that you're blocked. You're basically like pushing content out there and it just hits a wall. They don't let it go out and spread freely and let people see it enough to go out. It's too bad. It's like, why don't you just give me a chance? I know. Like, I know. To really like see, like let the people decide. But it's, it's again, they have that whole mentality where like, well, Mark will just give up or Mary Ann is just going to give up. So let's just keep going till she does. And you know what I mean? Today, today on Twitter, like, Hammerlin Jameson. sorry about that. Sorry. I picked up a lot of followers today. Oh, I think it's because I did that show with Nate. Midnight, what, I want to say Midnight Express, but it's not. I should know the name. But yeah, I think that would be the key. I got to start doing other shows because I think that's when you you get other people to see what you do and and to listen to what you have to to say, and that's how you find new new uh, listeners, subscribers. You know, I'm thinking that's probably how it's done. You know, so we'll get that going at some point. But listen, guys, three th three hours thirty seven minutes in. Mary Ab is uh, still going. Like we're we're literally this is the, when we do this show, it does go. It's crazy, guys. But that's how I do the show every day. We do between three and five hours every day. Let, just let, so you know that. Okay, I'm going to be militant. 
Yeah, you get going. I'm going to push this clip on right now. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to say goodbye to Mary M. I'm going to head back to the Real Talk screen and play the Donald Trump clip. Mary M., it's as usual a pleasure. Get some rest. You. If you feel like watching a very funny clip where Donald Trump does not have a translator, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be on. I'm going to play it right now. And then I will say goodbye to you guys afterwards. But here we go. Mary M., thank then, you again. And then See next, you next week, week, could you play that you play, Yes. You play that song? I'm going to work on that song, and then we can together play and it I'll next week. It. Yeah, I'll you sing it, I'll play it. Lyrics. Actually, if I'll listen to it and I'll sing a background if there's any backgrounds for it. I don't even know the song, but I'll check it out. And um, we'll see you next week. Enjoy your puppy. Enjoy Max. Woo! I can't wait to see. I'm going to go up and hold him after this. Anyway, we'll see you next week. I'm playing this clip for you guys. Check this out. This is Donald Trump, episode 11 of the Donald Trump Show. Here we go. Mary M., have a great night. Thank you. It's Haverhill and Jameson with the exclusive Donald Trump with episode 13 of the no, Donald Trump that's Show. not the Thank right Thank you one. very much really for joining me one. on episode 13 of the Donald hey, Trump the right Show. Tonight, we're talking about this stupid ad that just came out. Did you Hold see on. this sleep sofa? Haverhill <laughs> and Jameson live from the studio. Donald J. Trump joins us to talk about President G. Good afternoon. And thank you for joining me on the next episode of the Donald Trump Show. I believe this is episode 11. Unbelievable. I think this episode has to be about President G. Hall. Look, I got a problem with the G. Hall. He's out there delivering Fluhan all over the world. Everybody's blaming Trump. But the only person to blame is President G. Hall. But... No matter what I say, they don't believe me. It's a weird world we're living in right now. It's either Trump or not Trump. Nobody's talking about the issues. What does Trump think about abortion? What does Biden think about? Well, let's be honest, Biden doesn't think about anything. But if he was to think about something, what would it be? Maybe did I put underwear on this morning? Did I change my pants? Did I poop my pants? I don't know. These are maybe questions that Sleep Sofa Joe asks himself. But look, let's see if we have any clips for today. Do we have anything? Here we go. You guys couldn't get the subtitle version? I mean, what the hell? Where's my translator? God almighty. Right, I guess I'm going to have to respond and pretend I know what the hell he's talking about. Let's get back to it. Good day to you too, Jihol. Yeah, Shawshank Redemption was a good movie, but what does that have to do with anything? I know, uh, that's close. It's Dufresne, Andy Dufresne. I think he's trying to say the character's name from Shawshank. I'm not really sure who Kwame Shakur is. It may be Tupac's son. Oh, it is. Well, I have one question for you, Ji Hall. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell the world what was going on? We could have done something about it. You know we call you a Ji Hall, right? Look, you brought it upon yourself. I can't control your actions, G. We only come up with nicknames for people based on their actions, and you've been a Gio. I'm sorry. Gio. You should be Gio. All right, look, I can't do this anymore. I can't understand him. I'm not sure I appreciate your tone. What did you say to me? Okay, look, I need a translator. I can't freaking do this without a translator. I just can't. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. He keeps saying things. It sounds like he's insulting the chamber. See? That's exactly what he's doing. He just said it. He said invasion. They invaded us with coronavirus. I'll tell you what, Jihol, if you ever speak to me like that again, I'm going to trump you right in the face. Anyway, look, that's about enough for today's episode of the Donald Trump Show. Remember, the President Xi 
is now President Xi Hall. Sleeps over Joe is probably taking a nap right now. And I'll see you tomorrow at the next Donald Trump show. Have a good night. So, officially, officially an awesome night again with Mary M. I want to thank you, Mary M, for joining us. If you're still tuned in, if not, we will see you next week on the next Real Talk. Tomorrow, guys, I'm going to try to join you somewhat early, maybe about 7 o'clock tomorrow night. For day five, seven, four in a row, I will hopefully be bringing you episode 14 of the Donald J. Trump Show, which I'll be using probably some of the content that Mary M. just sent over to me. And I do have something I'd planned. I'm going to see if I can work on it for 14. And maybe I'll use Mary M's for 15. We'll see. But 14, if I'm doing the one I planned on the other day, I just haven't gone back over this footage yet. It could be earth shattering. That's all I'm saying. And it has to do with sleeves over Joe. Just so you know, look, I walked into the office and I'm like, where's the president? They said, he's right there. I said, no, that's the sleeves over. They said, yeah, I know. It's the president. He's a sleeps over. You could take a nap on him. He's a little lumpy, though, and he loses his train of thought. From time to time is kind of an understatement, it's like every 15 seconds. Anyway, look, I'm winning big league. I'm going to win. I'm going to win and take over the world again. <laughs> what are we going to go? What are we going to do tomorrow, Brian? I'm going to do the same thing we do every day, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, three hours and 44 minutes and 40 seconds on us, the Mark Pyers Real Talk Show. I will see you guys tomorrow. So subscribe, ding the bell, send your requests. Anything you want to talk about, we get in. Song requests on the beat seat for tomorrow. Let's have it! Hammerlin's coming up too. It's Mark Pyers. Join the program. Be a part of the show. You can support this program on Patreon.com. But more importantly, show up tomorrow. That's how you can support this program even more. It's Mark Pyers and it's Real Talk. Have a great night. Thanks again.